I'm Steve Coolius from the Power Play. Shining red lights with my buddies from Missing Curfew. Hockey's back, baby. Hockey's back. How are you? It's been a great start to the NFL season, and it's only getting better at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. DraftKings is putting new customers in the center of the action with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Get in on the action now. It's simple. Just pick your lineup, stay under the salary cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. Feel the NFL action like never before with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. DraftKings is a safe, secure, and reliable. And the best part is you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings app now and use code CURFEWKINGS. This week, new customers can get a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes. Enter code CURFEWKINGS to get a free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. Code CURFEWKINGS only at DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner in the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Dizzle. Fella, 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 fella. He's around the corner. Summer's, you know, winding down. It was quick. Fall. We need some new gear. It's that time of year. Good life, baby. I'm on the Good website, life, Obes, right now looking at the early fall essentials. And this company, through thick and thin, these guys have been our sponsors and our friends. Good New York brand. Just opened up another flagship uh, store in New York City. But get online now www.goodlifeclothing.com look at these new tri blends i mean if this the, i mean the guy looks like he fucks on here too but t-shirt club hair, subscribe subscribe to the t-shirt club get 20 percent off for the women out there for your for your ladies you got the new fall arrivals these girls love this material obes the colors are mint but you're right they got a nice little cream uh pattern coming out look right at now these hoodies man look at these double layer hoodies you kidding me it is mint so to all our listeners out there, 20% off, uh, promo code curfew20, and uh, some great things coming up in the good life uh, world, and we'll be excited to share them here in season two of Missing Curfew. So I will be getting the Loop Terry hoodie in double XL, and I'm going track pants too. I will be in New York in November for our boy Chris Shupp is having a little hockey tournament. You will be there with me. Yes, sir. I will be going into the good life store As to will witness I. it. These guys are great. Check it out. Promo code curfew 20. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a fresh new episode of Missing Curfew. I'm Shane O'Brien. And I'm Scotty Upshaw. And our boy Broadway, Jimmy Scoops Hayes, looking down on us as always. We are coming to you from Hall Pass Media in beautiful Newport Beach. Up dog, what a weekend for the lads! <laughs> we it turned, was a solid weekend, fella. We uh, we turned the clocks back. You, what a what a kickstart! It was like that engine when you fire up a lawnmower and you pull her to pull that string, baby, and just get that foot moving. <laughs> <laughs> we had the Ohana Fest down here in Dana Point on the beach. Good crew, great crew, big we sexy had, flying across the country for us from Boston. He came in hot like he always does. Yeah, loop dog. Shaking I mean, it, shaking his tail feather. If I, I'm not a big fan of, mainly because I probably have been the guy that's passed out that someone's taken a picture of me. I remember Flowers had a picture of me, I think in Vegas or whatever. And I was like, Flowers, <laughs> you ever take a picture of me again like that, I will fucking knock you the fuck like out. Like starfish? No? Like foot starfish, yeah. <laughs> you know, tits up and buck naked probably or whatever it was. Like the big sexy stayed at my house on the Friday night and I came down Saturday morning to watch some football. And he, he, let's just say he left it all out there. Up and I, I wanted to take a picture to send to the boys, but I was like, I don't like it when people do it to me, so I'm not going to do the big sexy, but one addition he was. Yeah, yeah, he was. And he was on great behavior. He's trying to get a job out in, uh, in yeah, Washington with the big boy job. Big boy job. Yeah, so I, he think was he, I think he was going to get On it. his best behavior. And, uh, you know, I'd say all of us were on quite, quite the good behavior. It was nice. It was nice. Uh, let's talk about Friday first. Obviously, our boy. Uh, Jim James was unbelievable. My morning jacket. Fuck, was he good, man? I'm amazed. <laughs> I was a little concerned, like getting my drink and getting over there because I was, I was so excited for this concert upbeat. Oh. Like I hadn't seen him since I think maybe 
Chicago we, with you or can we talk? No, about, I saw him at Red Rocks with you. Can we talk about? Um, I always so shout out to my boy Nasty from the Knuckles Nasty Knuckles yeah, podcast. But beauty. Jim James played in Philadelphia when I was there, and I was so excited to bring all the boys to see this My Morning Jacket concert back in the day. They played right on the pier in Philly. And I couldn't describe Jim James and this band more than just saying, listen, this guy fucking Fox. makes it rain, yeah. is what I said. Basically, Jim James makes it rain. I watched he him does. with Bonnaroo play in front of you know, a four-hour set that was just insanity, and the rain just kept coming down. His guitar would get all fucked up, and he'd continue to play. And anyway, yeah, Jeff Carter was there, too, me and Loops, and Carts had this little... It, basically no tarp, but he had on the little tiny uh, rain jacket head around his head like this. <laughs> it was it was great. But uh, so so we go to the show in Philly, all of us, Cote, me, Richie, everyone, and sure enough, fucking starts raining. What happened on Friday in Newport Beach? All of a sudden, never. it starts fucking raining in Newport. Right? Thunder We're like, what is going thunder on? Thunder and lightning and rain. I'm Jimmy. like, big sexy's like, I know he brought the rain. Fucking brought the rain. Like big sexy, it never rains here. Don't worry about it. All of a sudden, it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Jimmy was unbelievable, and the beanie was her first time seeing My Morning Jacket. She's never even really heard it till last week. What I'm going to say to people out there, if you see My Morning Jacket coming through your city, and you don't know them, just go treat yourself to the show. Like it's the, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, you're the one that you know got me turned on to MMJ. The first time I saw him at Bonnaroo, he had the cape on, and he put the towel over his head, and he was just fucking going. It's really something special, man. He has a gift that brings people together and kind of makes you lose... I mean, there's, yeah. uh, there's other reasons why I lost myself at that show, too, but while you lose yourself, I mean, if you have a chance to see My Morning Jacket or Jim James live, I know you would agree. I'll be, go see it, listeners, because he's he, live. I don't know if there's a better band, in my opinion. Yeah. No, Besides he's, this one. Maybe. He's go amazing. Jam. Yeah. So just the, the whole setup. And what I would say about what Obi touched on seeing this band, it depends also where you see him. Totally. You see him somewhere in the South, it is insanity. People, like, love him, right? Mm -hmm. You see him up, and I've seen him in Vancouver. I've seen him in Whistler. I've seen him play, um, if I'm thinking all over Canada, maybe not too many other places. But, you know, you want to be somewhere where people are into it, and they're not like, who's this new band? Oh, this is kind of cool. I'm not sure. But if you get to see some, like this band play somewhere where it's loyal, like we've seen him. In the good three, red states. We, we've seen him three <laughs> sets, like three shows in a row in L.A. That was fucking seen epic. Him Two out of three in Chicago at Chicago Theater. I've seen him. We've both seen him two in a row at Red Rocks. Yeah. So it, it all is like where people will travel to go watch these people. That's where you want to see this band. That's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, so Ohana Fest, they killed it. Saturday, Sunday, um, Eddie Vedder is the absolute front man of all time. He's man. the fucking legend. And uh, he just absolutely rocked it. To do three, sh basically three shows 56 in a row. 56 years old, brother. 56 years old. Getting up there, brought his, brought his daughter. It's, his, awesome. it's his little festival, and um, his daughter sang with him. Shout out to Chad Smith, the drummer from the fucking Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Andrew yeah. Watt, who is a guitarist who actually played for us at Bonnaroo one year. This kid is a legend. He's like best boys with Bieber and Post Malone, and... Uh, he's like an oracle of playing guitar, basically. Yeah. And he got up there and, and kicked it two nights in a row with Eddie Vedder, played every note, just ripped. Um, a sick, sick show. It was unbelievable. And on the Saturday, uh, shout out to a band, Spoon. If you haven't seen Spoon, check them out. They were great live. Uh, and you had your beautiful daughter at the show, which, um, you know, there's certain things that I, I'm jealous of you being a father, and then there's certain things that I'm not jealous of. <laughs> that... I was jealous of you were, you know, taking, being such a good dad, feeding her with their headphones on and dancing around with her and your beautiful girl, Christina. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool, but I was yeah. happy for you to enjoy that. And Spoon, what a show, man. It was unbelievable. Totally. Check out Spoon. So uh, yeah, I, I brought Izzy to her first show before she could walk. She's 13 months old. Yeah. She can't walk, but she sat there. She had the headphones on. We listened to Maggie Rogers, who is an incredible uh, chick. Yeah, yeah. Like she it was perfect. Too. In fact, now when I when I'm with Izzy at the house, I put on little Maggie Rogers, and she like starts bouncing around. She's got a smile. She's a super happy baby. But she's a hippie what already. I, what I got to witness too, just like she's got a little bit of me and my my background of loving music. She's got that, <laughs> and I'm happy she has it because she. You never know how these little fucking aliens or these little Martians, <laughs> when they come out, they're, they're just these little, like, you know, w creatures. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, I see her have a little music love in her in her blood, and that's, like, to me, the, the coolest thing ever. So um, it won't be her last show, but it was her first. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, it was great. So no, she's she's adorable, and she definitely she you tell she was bouncing around, and I made a joke at you. I said, just wait eighteen years when she's backstage, and you're like, Izzy, it's your dad. <laughs> Can you come get come get me? I want to meet Jim James. So uh, no, it, it was awesome. Ohana Fest, Pearl Jam, me, the Up Dog, Loops, and Flowers. We'll see you Friday night for the encore. Totally. And you got us VIP passes, thank God. We got the VIPs, so we thank got the in and outs. Hey, thank God. You fresh, got me. fresh, uh, fresh path to the pissers and the beers. Yeah, listen, I'm not like this snobby. Like, although we've been lucky throughout our life, especially since I met up, because you know so many people in the music industry. We did Bonnaroo the right way, although it cost us a lot of money. We did it. But for me, I need a cocktail close, and second, I need a pisser close. Like, I don't mind. I'll watch a show with GA, get right in there. I want that. But I need close cocktails and somewhere where I could take a leak. Because, you yeah. know, once it starts... It don't stop. <laughs> it don't stop. And so. then shout out to our boy Danny Clinch, who yeah. is uh, one of our good buddies, music, rock photographer, an incredible one. He uh, he just flew across the country. He had a festival called See Here and Now, which is in Asbury Park in New Jersey, right on the beach. Uh, their third year that they've done it. They've done an incredible job. Um, he was out here. He's best boys with Bruce Springsteen. Um, Jimmy. With Jimmy, with fucking Eddie, Eddie Vedder. And he got out there, played... Uh, Red Mosquito. Uh, he played the he played the harmonica. harmonica. Shout out to Flowers. He can play the harmonica too. But uh, so Danny is. Clinch just mixing it. He was going to come on the podcast, and he still will. Yeah. Monday morning, I had to fly to Aspen with the girl. We were a quick little trip in there. Danny Clinch texts me even in the morning. Obes, he's like, "Are we still on for the podcast with you and Obes?" And I'm like, "Fuck, I gotta just bounce. I'm out of town for the one day. Yeah. I'll be back." But he uh, he should be back this weekend, and we might have to sneak him in the studio, maybe get him to play a little. Uh, you know, a little harmonica. Play. Yeah, it, it was sick. The harmonica is an underrated instrument. And it's okay, Danny, because Monday morning, <laughs> I wouldn't have been snapping around. Either, so. <laughs> and to our Seattle Kraken fans about My Morning Jacket, they will be in Seattle, I believe, in like two or three weeks. So No, people, Friday. Friday? Yeah, wow, this fuck, week. There you go. Check them out. Seattle Check them out if fans. you're up in Seattle Kraken fans. A little preseason hockey. Ohana Fest, thank you. We'll see you Friday night to the Updog. I'll see you in the VIP section. Cocktails and pissers. I can't wait. The Ryder Cup, Updog. Now, listen, I made a lot of bad bets in my life. I made some bad hockey bets this year, me and Broadway. We, you know, all season long, we were going through, fuck, we need to win. Man, did I get this one wrong. Um, you, you know, credit to the, to the American team, Steve Stricker, our boy, Freddie Couples. I should have bet just because they had Freddie involved. They looked young. Europe looked old. And the thing that I was worried about, Uppy, when it started was the chemistry in the team room. But I, what I forgot or didn't know, I guess I should say, is they played junior golf against each other, college golf against each other with guys. Uppy, I think it was a changing of the guard in the Ryder Cup. I think Europe is in one for the next maybe 10 years. And that Patrick Cantley is a fucking bulldog. Say what you want. I think Paige uh, Spranick on our yeah, last podcast touched right. it all and uh, was exactly right. I think, she, I think she pointed out that these guys, um, you know, are super familiar with each other, travel together. You know, they all live in the same parts of the world. They all, the, all their girls know each other, whether there's a little mix, <laughs> whether they, we don't you know, know what's inter- going on behind closed doors they there, intertwine, but uh, they intertwine, you know, some relationships there or not. We don't know. Uh, rumors there, are rumors. There was actually the, the one time, the one day, I think it was the, the Saturday of the second, you know, four ball and the drunk Wisconsin fans, Kepka was playing. They're like, Hey, Kepka, Paulina, Paulina, buddy. Hey, Paulina. Yeah. I was like, geez, you guys are ruthless. Man. That's yeah, that's, that's ruthless. ruthless. But they, uh, they came together at the right time, man. And then what I saw after is like a group of college boys, just absolutely yeah. shredding it, doing beer bongs, doing, uh, smoking know, stogies, stogies, tunes, fucking back at the hotel in wisconsin just like we're on the road like playing yeah. in the minors or something but it was the royal uh, but it was the Ryder cup yeah. um you know then there's mj mj was out there how about your boy fucking jj, JJ doom. doom man what a, my, yeah my boss jj shout out to him he was pga tour.com mj jj and ahmad rashad smoking cigars behind the green watching the like that's one you want to put in your fucking man cave or bar or whatever he has yeah jj's tight with mj and those guys uh they love to tee it up they love to smoke some stogies uh they don't mind the odd vodka soda or uh tequila soda and me too mj's just a a badass he loves golf more than anything he's a competitor as we all know he's the ultimate competitor in sports he's the goat and uh it's nice to see that. I, I bet you when you're on Team America and you see MJ wearing the same tracksuit as you behind the green, you're like, I got to fucking show up here. Yeah. You right? probably have a little more swag too, right? We got the MJ, we got the green one there. He said in his interview on uh, on NBC that golf is the hardest sport. 
in his mind. That's coming from maybe the greatest Because you battle against yourself the whole time. So up dog, uh, congratulations to Team USA, our boy Freddie Couples. Um, I was way off. Paige is right. Uh, could be a change in the guards. And that that course, Whistling Straits, which you played, it fucking looked amazing. You got to be. That 17th hole, that par three, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, it's just like that. It was crazy. Great, Don't, great entertainment. Great Do track. not duck hook one. I ain't going down be, there to get you it. You would be screwed. I'm not going to go down there. The um, caddy can go get it for me. I'll take my penalty. Bring it up. So it's, and it's a tough walk. These, the, the older guys, it's a bear. Dustin Johnson went five and oh, he's got, crazy. he's got some stamina. As he as he said after when he won, yeah. They are have, you going to show these boys how to? No, party? they go. They go uh, as the oldest, as the most veteran oldest guy in the United States team. Do you think you can party with these young guys? He goes. Kepka was like whispering, whispering something in his ear. He goes, Abso- absolutely. Next question. <laughs> so you know what DJ was getting totally. After, yeah, yeah. Right? Of course, of course. Congrats to Team USA. I saved my bets though on on the, on the Sunday. I went singles. I went heavy USA. Saved me. Thank God. So, uh, our next segment. Is brought to our good friends at DraftKings. They're everywhere. I'm watching UFC. They got a ring fucking clock there. I watched something else. There was DraftKings. They're everywhere. They're amazing. NFL's NFL fantasy and picks. Up dog. We'll start with the picks this week. I don't know with the festival if you got her going, but I went five and one. Thank God I needed it. My only loss was on the Philadelphia Eagles. I was taking the Cowboys. Flowers comes over, watches the game with me. I end up taking the birds. They get absolutely fucking rolled. Um, did you bet anyone this week? Did you take your Buffalo Bills? That You're absolutely damn right. Worked Oops. over Washington. I'm just pulling up my little uh, website here right now. You know, DraftKings.com, and I'll tell you, I had a I had a morning like no other. My morning was, um, I definitely I'm gonna see these daily figures because this is where you, this is just nice. I like this. Um, but I'll tell you right now, Obes, I went. Oh. I can't find it. It was just so many wins in a row. But basically, <laughs> I went into that night at the festival. Friday night. Fr- no, sun- no, Sunday night, because um, Sunday was Sunday football, right? So yeah. I went into Pearl Jam Sunday night, and I had some extra extra loot in the account. So what? I hammered... House is money. I hammered the Packers to win. Yes. They win. Yeah. But during the second half, I always jumped on and checked the line. And I money lined them because it was a nice money line. They were up like ten points at half. I just missed it, but I tried to double up. So I anyway, I did good. <laughs> I, I did good. You I, went for uh, the second half, did you? Yeah, like you know what? Just bringing it into Sunday night. That's yeah, the yeah. way I felt. And I'm like, you know, Eddie Vedder was just killing it on stage, and I thought, <sighs> you know, I like putting. You know, you talk about putting the ball in the best guy's hands, and Aaron Rodgers is probably the best guy. Yeah, people aren't hating. I was all. putting my money in the best guy's hands, and I just said. Let's see what this guy can do. Can he, you know, can he take this fucking San Fran team on the second half like he did in the first? And yeah, they won the game, but yeah. I didn't quite double down my bet. I took the over in that Sunday nighter, which it went over. Uh, I was going to tease it. I wasn't going to take the Packers and the over tease, but I just went straight over because I was worried about, I don't know, just being on the road. But say what you want about Aaron Rodgers, man. He's back and he's fun to watch. Up dog. I got our ball of Camus here. Um, our fantasy. With our commissioner, Larry Bettman. You worked me over. I had a bad week. Um, I brought the ball to Camus for you. Congratulations. Thank you. But I also brought the wine opener just to see ah, how good of a team well, guy you kinda, really are. are. How year. good of a team guy you really are. No Jeez, no pressure. If it was a 16, no I pressure. Might, if it was a 16, I might have to just crack it right now because <laughs> I'm probably matured. But the 19, I think I should hold on you're to this. You're going to put it on the mantle. You're going to let her marinate for a bit, are you? Oh, fuck. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'd open this up. Should we let her breathe or what? I don't know. It's your call. I just brought it just to uh, just have a look at it. <laughs> just to have a look, eh? Well, just to so see. I'll, you know, I'll be listen, honest. Joss Allen, that guy fucked me, man. He played so good. And then I had two guys on the bench. I made this trade for Latavius Murray because he's the number one running back for the Ravens. I bench him. No, sorry. I put him in. Take out Hunt. He has a day. I got Emil Sanders on my bench. He has a day. I'm making excuses. I don't care. I'm making excuses, Upshaw. Bottom line, hut, hut, fuck machine. Took me down. I have changed my name from this guy, Fucks, to In One. To In One. I saw that. Because I'm 0-3. I play Fact Daddy this week, Little Nachos. I need a fucking win, Upshaw. I need a fucking win. I know. I just, I'm reading the thing here, the recap. And the fuck machine, hut, hut, hands this guy, (laughs) Fucks. Third consecutive loss. Not perfect, Obes. 114 to 81. I mean, 
I'm my more, guy. I had Barkley finally getting getting showing that his leg is fucking feeling pretty great good. Great for you, Josh Allen. Thirty seven points. I mean, come on. And to put insult to injury, I had the Redskins defense. So not only were you working, Ooh. you were working me on my, on the points, and then I'm like, fuck. And he's stinging my fucking D while he's out of here. I'm like, I'm in one. Anderson, this, the the receiver for Carolina, I cut him after his performance on Thursday night. One point. I'm like, that's it. You're cut. I'll be, I don't know what to do. I'm, I working, love- I'm working the waiver wire. I'm, pick, I'm picking up Hunter Renfrew from the Raiders. I'm picking up guys left, right, and center. I don't know. And folks, Upshaw is the ultimate wait. team I guy. I still have water in there. I'm going to cr- crush that water. We're going to turn that water into wine, aren't we, Upshaw? Are yes, we are. Um, so I love this fantasy, Obes. I love when I battle against my buddies. Because you imagine this is like real life stuff, right? Like, yeah. You know, you're you're an NHL fucking fan. GM. You're an NHL GM. <laughs> and it ain't fantasy. No. But holy shit, you take three Brian? losses in a row, you change your name, you fucking start drinking <laughs> wine, you're like, fuck, this guy's done. This no, but guy's done. You can see how, like, it's a great point by you. You can see, obviously, it's on a way bigger level, but, like, you know, you go through tough times in the NHL and they start pushing the panic button. As players, you're like, calm down. Like, it's fucking two weeks. We've, you know, we're on a tough stretch. But when you're the GM, especially at that level, I'm, I can see why some of these guys kind of push the panic button to a certain extent but can we talk about odell beckham jr you picked him I up picked in a him trade up. i picked him up and i picked up juju smith yeah you, you, and he got hurt every time i pick someone up someone gets hurt yeah but he's questionable this week oh yeah that's what i was gonna say so i'm watching along on uh on sunday i'm at the i'm, I'm down by the pool at the hotel chilling and you're working me but i noticed that you got a running back starting in the second games that's out. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I, I got a chance that. that this guy, if I'm You didn't so, text me either. No, no, I, uh, I no, noticed it. I, I logged like, on. I, I had like chan- 10 minutes. I got a, I got a chance because I know Upshaw's buzzing around his house, probably taking care of Izzy, fucking doing 100 million things Upshaw style. He's going to miss this out. Right before kickoff, 10 minutes before I looked again, <laughs> changed it. I was like, you put Fournette in. I'm like, fuck. How, how can that doesn't, you know, hit you with a notification? It, cheers, Cheers, buddy. Good win, bud. Thank Good you. Good fucking win. Talk about that. They fucking notify me for everything on my phone, and they won't notify me that that you know I don't have my starting I running know. back I, in. I was like, maybe I catch a break somehow. But yeah. I, you didn't even need him, so didn't need him. Larry Bettman, your league's a joke, but I'm coming. I'm coming. If I go down, I'm taking the whole league with me. I told Flowers, I'm going to just start trading guys. I'll make a mockery of it. So, well, you know, I'm always willing to talk. Eh? I'm cheering for Hut Hut Fuck Machine. So go get him. Um, Uppy. You mentioned this story to me on Netflix uh, about Marty Fish, the old tennis player. Um, you told me how good it was. I watched it, I believe, yesterday, or but it doesn't matter because I wanted to talk to you about it. A lot of talk about mental health in the NHL. You know, Leonard was just on Spitting Chicklets with Biz and, and Wit and the boys. You know, he's battled it. Uh, you know, when I think about mental health, a guy I played with, you know, God rest his soul, was Rick Rippon. Um, I witnessed him battle through it, you know, do really well at points. And then I remember, you know, living in the hotel with him where he had his do not disturb on for two weeks and you only saw him at the rink. So the Marty Fish story was unbelievable. Um, I guess my question to you is the thing that blew me away was when he was going into his quarterfinal match against Federer, like he said, his mind just took over. And like, you know, we were both pretty mentally strong, I think, but it made me think back early in my career. And and listen, I had a great career and I wouldn't change anything, but you know, going into games where you knew you had to fight and you know my mind would be racing and I couldn't sleep the night before pre-game nap and none of that thing so obviously on a lower scale than Marty Fish playing at you know center court US Open but did you ever battle that stuff or was that something you handled or guys you played with I remember Ripper you know poor guy battled with it went out there and fought and was one of my favorite teammates and, and just couldn't get through it yeah uh, you touch on a good part of um so the story is incredible the story of you know young tennis kind of coming through like youth tennis in America, battling, having an opponent to battle against. And in this case, and in, in Marty Fish's story, it's Andy Roddick. Marty Fish was always second to Andy Roddick growing up. I think he was 0-10 in professional, um, in his professional career against him, and just knowing that he was always getting owned. Yeah, and the, the, you know, mental health is, is, is a struggle that, you know, you read all these things on Facebook and Instagram now that are, you know, they're starting to have to come out and say like, you know, is Instagram creating mental health problems for young kids? Is is being too much, you know, too much screen time affecting young kids and then, you know, depression and all this stuff. But it kind of like snowballs. And, and you know, if, if you can't talk about it and if you can't seek help, you know, I, I'm very fortunate, you know, to deal uh, to, to have played with some guys. Like, and, and I always resort to Toots and I, and I share Toots' story with yeah. so many people, um, you know, about family 
and you know things that happen within your family that are devastating and it could lead you down a bad path and if you don't find help and talk about it with people uh things can you know things can really spiral out of control and uh, in a case like toots is he's 10 years sober beautiful family connected more with himself and people around him now than he's ever been Mm -hmm. um and when you dive into this story there is there's so much struggle and then uh what i really loved was the fact that he you know he moves to la and he says like basically him and his wife they devote a full year to nutrition to training to not drinking alcohol to you know studying his his mind figuring out how he works figuring out how he's going to be better and because his goal in the end was to compete in the you know in the tennis championship in london which is only eight guys in the yeah. top of the world and at the time he was like 120th yeah and he fucking does it he puts himself he defies odds and usually when you defy odds you're you're going against like yourself and and you can have this dream but unless you put forth an effort and you dedicate yourself and and you you know, you say, fuck it, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be someone different than I've, than I've been before. But in the end, I think there's going to be, I'm going to find happiness to it. And that, that part of the story in the middle of his story, and won't give it away, but that gives you like this light. Right. And then he gets a chance to play Andy Roddick and he fucking beats him. And then, then you're like, it was all worth it. Right. Then the spiral happens where he can't control, you know, how his mind works. And it's, it's something that people tennis to me is one of the you know the hardest games because it's you versus one other guy and you're you're at center court no matter where you are it's just you two you can't rely on your teammate you can't rely on your goalie you can't just sit on the bench and say okay guys like go go win me you know yeah go help us out go it's you and goal. and w- when you start doubting things obes man things can get things can get crazy so yeah, I, mean, I, I, I know i'm going on here but no. the story is incredible and it's you know it's it's basically uh the untold uh series which our boys that we had on last week are you know it's that part of netflix series so everyone should watch it yeah it, it's something young kids should watch it's something that uh if you're dealing with, people will always be there to listen so no matter what's happening you need to be able to talk hey eh, obes like if i have something going on i know you can fucking listen to me and and give me your feedback and um, you know, you just got to have those people around you that, that can be humble and yeah. tell you like, you're we're always here. We're always here for you. Exactly. And yeah, the way he dedicated himself, he, you know, he was trying to, and it, you know, I, it related to me because I was always battling my weight throughout the, my career. So, you know, he wanted to lose 12 pounds and then, you know, he got into it and, and, and got addicted to like, you know, the way he fell, he ended up losing 31 pounds. You know, you heard his girlfriend say like, he didn't have any other life. It was tennis. He had no friends, but he made that sacrifice to play. And then. Obviously, the game just broke him down, and, um, you know, Toots is a great example. I was with Toots the last year he played. Like, you know, he was probably one of my best buddies on the team. I didn't really know he was ben- battling mental health. Like, I just thought he was, you know, A, I like to have a good time, like myself, and, and B, that's how he let loose from the game, right? There was a lot of pressure on him because he was the most recognized guy in Nashville, and he had to fight, and he had to run around and hit guys, and if he wasn't playing physical, you know, Trotsky was probably on him a bit. So I just thought that was his way to – to kind of release from the game as it was my way too, you know, and I go on to see once he doesn't go get help that he was battling that stuff. So I guess our point here is if you're out there and you need help, don't be afraid to ask. I would ask Uppy, Uppy would ask me, so on and so forth. So uh, Marty Fish, great story. Um, Great golfer. Great golfer. So Uppy, thank you for for getting me on that. That was awesome. So our next segment is uh, brought to you by our good friends at Good Life. Up Dogs rocking the t-shirt. I usually do, but I had to rock the Pearl Jam just because I fucking got her at the festival. It's a nice one. That's fucking Eddie, eh, buddy. I can't wait for Friday. I can't wait for Friday and Saturday. Fuck, I'm glad you got me VIPs. So the segment is brought to you by our good friends at Good Life. Always looking sharp, Uppy. Speaking of a guy who always looked fucking sharp, King Henrik. His jersey is going to be retired. 30s going to the rafters. Man, this guy, like... You know, I talked to AV about this when I was playing golf with him the other day at Big Canyon. Like, you know, when, when Hank came to New York, like, the Rangers weren't very good, right? You know, they won their cup in 93 with Mess. And then after that, they were, you know, they brought Lindros in. They brought all big names in, but they couldn't really get it going. Hank comes in after the lockout, changes the organization. I'm going to steal your word. Makes hockey cool again. And just obviously off-ice success, but no-brainer. Great guy. Party with him when he won the Vezina in Vegas. 
I'm just going to say that's how I know he got the name The King. I'm going to leave it at that. What a shaker. Updog, what are your thoughts? I know you know you know Hank a little better than I do. Just a legend. Yeah, I mean, from 2005 on, Obes, he came in and took the reins as as the king of New York. No one had ever had that title. I mean, Jeter was Jeter was on his own Ooh. level, but not not named the king, right? No. What, what, and God, I mean, maybe? part of the good Swede club, um, you know, a good buddy of our boy Jay Liddell and Andy Mack. Um, so for for us, we look at Lundqvist as a as a face of of uh, you know being a legend, looking good. This guy would wear a suit to practice because like he'd have something going on after that. You're like he's going to like some fucking Calvin Klein shoot or yeah. something after. And I mean, I think he wore a collar everywhere. So if it wasn't like a fucking sick leather jacket, he was coming in with a nice suit jacket, pants, solid belt, buttoned up shirt cufflinks i mean it just you look at the guy you're like pro 101 this guy yeah. this guy does it all and then fucking then he stands in there and he makes he makes saves look easy brought the new york rangers to the stanley cup final they lost to la that year that was an incredible run um you know he didn't win a cup but this guy he's got an olympic gold medal he's got world championships he's put sweden you know goaltending on the map he's um you know a well-deserved candidate to be up in the rafters. Yeah. I scored my first goal on Mike Richter. Shout out to, to yeah, that's myself. unbelievable. But this guy's right there. I mean, they've had two Hall of Fame goaltenders play basically the last twenty, let's say twenty-five years of hockey in yeah. New York. They've had two Hall of Fame goaltenders. So, you know, shout out to those. Uh, you know, shout out to him for for being a, a legend. He's he's you know he's now enjoying life and playing a lot of tennis. Him and Mac Elgo play tennis at uh, Mac and Rose. A uh, little tennis club in Do New they? York now. Sick. He's he's gonna love his life. He's gonna he's gonna live a nice life. Pro, uh, you know, post hockey, whether he's on TV, whether he's sitting in the box next to, uh, Dolan. you know, Dolan and and making decisions on how to make that team uh, a better team. Um, you know, Henrik Lundqvist will be in hockey for a long, long time. Yeah, well said. And he loves Pearl Jam. He was at the Pearl Jam show uh, a couple weeks ago with Loops, Matt Gallar, boy, Shoppy. Shout out to Chris Shop. Shoppy, we're thinking about you, buddy. We'll see you in November. Um, you know, and then Lou gave him a good tweet out. You know, Lou tweeted out that every time he played against Hank, and I have nothing but the most respect for Roberto Luongo, great teammate, unbelievable goaltender, bailed me out many nights in Van City. So to see Lou tweet out that when he played against Hank, it brought out the best in him, I think that's the ultimate compliment from a, for a player when your, your peers or teammates say that about you. So to King Hank, um, congratulations. We'd love to get you on. we got Mac L maybe doing some – Dirty work for Mr. Curfew. See if we can get him, but no brainer. Uh, up dog on a little, you know, sadder, not sadder, but kind of pisses me off. This does piss me off. Jack Eichel. The whole situation um, has been a fucking joke, if you ask me. Kevin Adams, I don't know you. I don't even know if I played against you. I'm not saying it's easy to be a GM, but I don't think you're handling this very well. He fails his physical, which we all figured. They stripped him the captaincy. Um, you know, yeah, Ike's is making 10 bananas, right? Everyone's going to say he's making 10 bananas, but the guy wants to play hockey. He wants to get this figured out. From what I've heard, Kevin Adams is treating the trade as if Jack Eichel was healthy. Other teams obviously want to protect themselves if he doesn't come back to get assets back if he can't play, which makes sense to me. Um, just your thoughts on the whole situation. Hopefully it gets, you know, I think LA would be a great spot for him. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts? I just think it's been dragging on to Kevin Adams. Like, let it fucking go. Move on. It's like the fucking ex-girlfriend. You don't want to keep dragging her back in. Just go get a new piece of pussy. Totally. Here. Go get a new <laughs> totally. fucking chick. Like, there's and other it's going to be a pretty hot chick yeah. if you're trading your hot chick yeah. for another hot chick. You're trading a rocket for a rocket, Kevin. Bring I in the agree. new fucking rocket. I think it's it's a well-known thing now that, that Kevin Adams has dug himself into a pile of shit that he's probably not going to get out of smelling like roses. <laughs> no, he's, he's not. coming out smelling stinky. He's going to come smelling stinky. It's a known thing now that <laughs> he has ruined the price tag. Uh, he's ruined the way he treats a quality player. A, your captain. B, a kid that's 24 years old. They're, the, the accountability on an organizational side with the player's representative side this has been shitty. It's been shitty. handled really shitty. The, the kid is injured. The kid has the best doctors in the world he's talking to. Buffalo Sabre doctor, I'm not sure you're the best doctor in the planet. The guys Jack Eichel are probably talking to are probably giving him some good advice. Exactly. We can leave it at that. Yep. He wants to elect to do one style of surgery. The team doesn't want him to do it. They want him to do this. There needs to be accountability in letting the human being 
do what he wants to his own body when he's given, you know, when he's evaluating different, different things. I've been part of this. I'd like to share this with young kids too, who are put in a situation when they get hurt, Obes, where they feel pressured by the GM or by the doctor for the team to do a certain thing and they just do it. And it screws you. It screwed me when I was young, big time. And you don't get the right. Loopal? It screwed loops. So, oh, phone's ringing. We got a bite. He's got a bite. Maybe Training camp's still on. Maybe someone wants me. Fuck, the Kraken? Is that the Kraken? Is that Ronnie Francis calling you? No, that's not the Kraken. (laughs) That there is not the Kraken. Give it 15 games. Uh, so, So, to me, Jack Eichel, A, needs to get healthy. For sure. He now should have the right. He didn't fail. He didn't pass his physical. They took his captaincy away. Okay, let him go do what he needs to do now to get healthy. He has the Olympics coming up in four months, five months. Yeah. That should be a goal for him. A goal for him to be uh, would be to play in the National Hockey League this year. And Hopefully. Buffalo Sabres, if you're smart, you make the trade. You should have made it two months ago, but now you've you've dug yourself a hole. He needs he needs to be somewhere where he's wanted. Yeah. And he's a good young kid. I know him. Our boy Mac L knows him well. The kid has he's lots of hockey left. He can be the star of a franchise. So you're going to get draft picks back. You're going to get a, a number one young D-man back, whatever the case may be. Don't bury this. Don't bury this situation because it's only affecting you too. Totally. And you just kid the, just wants to get healthy and play you hockey. You just got the first overall pick in Owen Power. He's going back to Michigan. My point is you had a great asset in Jack Eichel. Yeah, there's some unknowing about, his, about the injury. Obviously, it's scary. And some teams as GMs are going to protect themselves. But now you've just muddied the water so much and pissed everybody off, including him. You're pissed. It's just a tough situation. So to Ike's, keep your head up, fella. We're pushing for you here at Missing Curfew. We'd love to have you out in L.A. We'd come up to Staples, head out to Cat Studio after. <laughs> Be a nice time. So Ike's, keep your head up, buddy. Better days ahead. Up Dizzle. Our boys at Canada Dips. What do I got going today? Oh, I went back to the old... Uh, Wintergreen flavor. Let's put that up there by the Kami. Yeah, I get it up there, Obes. This segment's brought to you by our good friends at Canada Dips. The boys are throwing lip boomers in everywhere. Up dog. This is something I never loved when I played, obviously, and I do not miss it now. Backskates. Brought to you by Canada Dips. Backskates, to our listeners that don't know what it is, it's basically they skate the bag right off you. <laughs> like, yeah, here totally. you are. Stay on that line and fucking skate. Like, it has nothing really to do. Does it think does it mean you're in shape? Does it mean like you can't play a game? Because there are certain guys I could like. Listen, obviously I was never great at backskating. Right, I was a bigger guy. Took me a couple strides to get going. Never felt good. But then when preseason started and started coming to you know plays down the corner in front of the net inside the blue line, I'm like I feel good. I can play. Does it does it really transition into you're in shape or you're not in shape? Did you think that as a player now that you're an ex player now? To me. I think it's all just mental, like right. I think it's a it's a tool used in a like the military. Yeah, they grind you to death till you feel like you're puking just because they can. They can, and it's it's a thing to get you over these little mental hurdles that the season will bring on naturally. A tough schedule. B injuries. C dealing with like the coach fucking all over you. So adversity. Training camp is very short right now. The coaches only have three days, you know, to start things off uh, where they basically feel like they should bag skate you because as training camp goes on, you know, they realize that they don't want to hurt their, their, they want to be ready for game one. Mm-hmm. They don't want a, a young kid or their star player to, you know, have bad hips or bad groins or a bad back because, you know, because shit, I was just licking my chops so much to bag skate these that's, guys. That's kind of my point before you continue. So that's kind of my point. I was, we got 82 games to go. We got to get through preseason not getting hurt. We got 82 fucking games to go here. Do you really want to skate me through the fucking ground day one and two because you don't think you'll want to see if I'm in shape? You'll be able to tell if I'm in shape come preseason games. Would, would you not? Or Yeah, but I think it's a, you know, I'm going to take the side of like where their heads are at, I think, as a coach and, and as teams. And this is why they do think it's a, it's a benchmark, okay? It might be. It might be to show, you know, your team that fucking Scotty Upshaw can't keep up. Look at him. There's four other guys that are trying to compete with this kid, with Scotty, who's now a veteran of 12, 13 years. These two young kids want your job. Look at them. They're beating you in these bag skates. 
you need to show these young kids that you can you are leading the way mm-hmm. and then you know that should just carry into you being like the guy in practice that can you know stay out on the ice and not get tired on a penalty kill or you know do three or four cutbacks behind the net to keep the play alive like there's so many things that th- they want this to transition into um i was always yeah, i was point. always okay in bag skates but i'll tell you what transitioning that into a game where I had to go for a minute and 20 minute seconds on the ice, I'm fucking dead. Now, I don't know wh- why that was. I think it's my broken <laughs> nose. I couldn't fucking breathe right. But Well, you were a it, good skater. Straight yeah, line, and so that makes straight sense line skating. Skate. Yeah, you were good at it. And what we saw Connor McDavid do yeah, let's get is into that. fucking nuts, right? Like he wasn't <clears throat> even probably skating hard. So Connor McDavid, videos out there. I think we all saw it. Missing curfew. If you follow us, it was all over ours. He basically beat the guys by in, in a three- down back. So down back, down back, down back. He beat the guys by a, almost a full half length. And he wasn't, I, to me, was half he wasn't least. even skating. I know. But the, and, and the secret to this, all you young players out there, the secret to a, a bag skate on the stop starts is your first fucking four strides. It's like when as soon as you get to the red line and hit the red line, all right? Don't stop fucking four feet. Yeah. Hit the red line because it looks, it looks yeah, good on you. That. Stop on the red line. And four fucking hard strides the other way, and then just keep your legs moving. Try to stand upright. Don't bend over too much. And then as soon as you put the brakes on again, four hard strides. You need to know that you're working for like 40 seconds, and then it's done. Yeah. And then you get like a minute and a half break, and you got to do it again. I mean, it's just, there's a system to it. Um, but fuck, it's it's part of everything we've done but Connor mcdavid is is the best skater in the world and he made it look super fucking simple and there were some quality guys skating i know i think he was a dry saddle and fuck i don't know who he was with but i would always try to negotiate with the coaches and and strength guy that hey listen the back skate like we shouldn't do stops and starts like tight turns the groins the groins you you don't want the fuck pull the groins out that would never go and for me i was the ultimate deal cutter in the back skates right so if Connor mcdavid's in my group i'd be like hey mcdavid fella Fucking slow down a little bit here, right? Like totally. one, you Uppy, you lead the first time. I'll lead the second time. Loops, you lead the third time. And I thought you could look at it from two ways. Ups, coaches probably look like, oh, look at O'Brien. He's fucking deal cutting, so he looks good. Yeah, I was. But maybe it also shows that we're a team and we're in this together. We're gonna let Uppy lead once, then I'll go. We're not gonna let you beat us, coach. We're not gonna make one of our teammates look bad. But McDavid. I guess when you have the best player to maybe ever play, the best player now and the best player maybe ever, you just maybe look at him and be like, okay, the coach is not even going to judge me because there's nobody in the planet that can fucking skate. But what he was doing, and I think you're right, Uppy, he probably wasn't even giving her 110. So What was the worst bag skate you've ever had to do? Is it the down bag? Well, I mean, so the two hardest training camps I've ever had were Torts's, but Torts's was firm and fair, as the fucking boxing ref would always say, firm and fair. Hartley's training camp was fucking ridiculous. Hartley was such a loser that he would he would split up instead of just having let's say three groups or whatever it would be at training camp. He would make another group, so you would only have like forty or th- like you know and 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 you, and you get stuck in the group with totally. The last guy. And you'd only no. have two lines, and it was still go and go and go. I'm like, I remember talking to Cammy and Geo and Stage and Earn. I'm like Hoodler. I'm like boys. Like someone's gonna get fucking hurt. And now in Bob's, it def- might be Bob Hartley yeah. when I fucking grab him. I two hand him over the fucking head with my twig. <laughs> In Bob's defense, we came out of the gates and we were in better shape than every other team. Yeah. But after three weeks, everyone Torch caught up. So I used those to- were the hardest. But Torch's camp was hard. Torch's first three days are hard. And then the rest, he gives you more days off than anybody I ever played with. Torch is the man for that. To me, those are so those situations are like straight up, like, listen, we're going to fucking bury you right now. Yeah. I hated and I despised the fucking undercover bag skates. Which were like, all of a sudden, things are good, right? Yeah. Like, fucking, you're winning two or three games, and things are good. And, you know, the coach comes in, has a good meeting. And then, like, he's got something in his back pocket. And yeah. in practice, towards the end, all of a sudden, he's like, calls a, all right, we're going to do, like, guys, both corners, opposite ends, one-on-one, two-on-one, oh. three-on-two. And that, to to the listeners out there, if you're not, like, a, a hockey player, a current one, this shit this shit is intense where it's nonstop with no rest because there's not enough fucking guys. You yeah. got 20 guys, and all of a sudden, in each drill, if you think about going down one on one from both sides, that's four guys, and then two on one, 
That's another fucking six guys. And then you add another two guys into the mix. <laughs> that's fucking... That's, that's eight, half your squad almost. That's half the squad going right now. And then that stops. And then they make you go right again. And all of a sudden, this drill goes on for 10 or 12 minutes. And you are like... And the coaches are all sitting on the fucking bench Love laughing. It. Probably Love hung it. over. Probably just sitting there fucking... You better be hung over. Yeah. Totally. What else? <laughs> you if you're going to watch your back skate, you better be hung over for fucking Yeah, fuck exactly. Um, so it, the undercover back skates to me, Obes... We're the ones you just, that I... It, it's such a great point by you, and you just you have refreshed my memory. I think it's the Camus, and you refreshed my memory. Charlie Huddy one-on-ones. You remember the Charlie Huddy one-on-ones? Yeah. Fucking forward stands in the corner. D at the fucking... St- uh, the first hash mark. We can't turn into the fucking blue line. And you forwards, every time you fucking cheaters would just cheat enough, and I, obviously I wasn't the fleetest of foot, and I'd be just trying to dig and gone... Finally, I just started fucking, especially not veteran guys like you, yeah, but yeah, any yeah. young guy yeah. that would try to take me wide, I would just fucking two-hand him. So, and then, and then, so you would have to take the next guy, the coming from the other side, right? I would take that one, and then I'd have to back check. And then you have to back one. check. Yeah. And then, basically, you could pick up another guy and fucking go down yeah, so like, as, a, as an offense. It's, it's all doing the up. same drill, yeah. So you could just do the one-on-one Charlie What did Charlie Huddy do in his career to make the fucking drill like that? Fuck, I thought Charlie had slow boots like me. Fuck. Yeah. It's a great point. I don't miss those days. Charlie Pride related. Charlie. <laughs> and from the uh, from one element of bag skate to the other, this is the element that I would have been in. I think if there was fucking, I don't even know if there was Twitter when I was in Calgary. I'm sure there was. But this was me. I remember doing the bag skate, and I was Oliver Ekman Larson, who I think is a great pickup for the Canucks, who. All you know, Swede team. Yeah. The, the, the video came out up that we watched that he was kind of lagging in the bag skate. And Greener. I love Travis Green. He's I I got nothing but faith in him. But his first day of training camp, I guess, it's is, hard. I, I've been there. You've been it's there. It's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. fucking hard. And he makes he lets everyone know. Yeah. He goes, I'm fucking. This is you're getting buried. You're getting. This buried. is how it is. And then like uh, guys respect him for it, but he tells you. It's At least like, he tells you. Yeah, he tells you. And then and then the fucking fitness testing was no joke either. Yeah. He he demands fitness, and that's one on one. So, I mean, I, I love that Greener demands fitness, and I play with him yeah, the end totally. of his fucking career. And I remember him. I, he wasn't the first guy in the gym. I'll tell you. That. I know. <laughs> he was first guy to do this right here. But yeah, totally. But no, coaching and playing is different. And Uppy, I forgot that you went through through camp with Greener. So, Oliver Eckbert Larson gets demolished in the backscape by the whoever veteran guys he's with or young guys. And then people in Vancouver, all over them. A week later, a week into camp, there's people in Vancouver talking about, you know, how good he looks and he could be up for the Norris. I think it's a great pickup. I think the Garland kid's a great pickup. I guess what I'm saying, Ups, is that kind of proves my point that, hey, Oliver Ekman Larson did shitty in the back skate, but trust me, game one, he'll be in shape. He'll be ready to rock. I just think... You can't look too much into skating in straight lines. Like, the guy worked out. He's a pro. He's been in the league forever. You're telling me he didn't get his workouts in? Maybe he didn't do the fucking skating drill because he didn't know about it. I don't know. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? Like, you play with him. Yeah. I, I mean, I play with him when he was young. And what I've seen of him lately isn't like slow boots. It's not. Oliver Ekman Larson was always an, a, a, an elite player. Excuse yeah. me. Because he could walk the blue line. He could get pucks through. He made good passes. And obviously, he became a leader. He was the captain of the fucking Coyotes when yeah. Doan left. That's a big title to carry on. Um, he makes eight million bucks a year. His first impression on the ice with fan, with fucking weasel weasel uh, reporters in the crowd yeah. with their cameras is like, oh, he can't keep up. What the fuck do they know? Nothing. What's Corey Hirsch know? <laughs> Nothing. He's a goaltender. Yeah, yeah. He, he's yeah. a goaltender. Yeah. I don't even know if he was. I just know he, he likes to. You yeah, know, he speak likes his to mind. the pot. Yeah. But to me, uh, let the guy fucking play. Let the guy play. I mean, no one's winning fucking Norris trophies in training camp. In fact, there's no question. Did the Coyotes make the playoffs last year? No. no. This guy hasn't played a game since what? March? Yeah. June? I don't oh, fucking fuck. know. When? April, maybe? March? April. April. Yeah, yeah, probably. It's a long May, time. May, maybe. Right? So it's like, all right. Oh, he's been off forever. It's it, It's been off forever. Traded, new city. Yeah, you know, it's probably you, bad ice. You don't know. Yeah, it's probably are, bad ice. No, they're, they're training camps in Abbotsford. I played there. Fuck, the ice is terrible. I love, I mean, good little town. People of Abbotsford are good to me. Not the best ice. And you make a great point. What if he had new wheels on? That, Tough wheels. could have had new wheels. You never, know, feet hurt. you never know what was going on, especially to a veteran guy. And... It makes a good point by you about the media. Maybe the NHLPA should step in and be like, okay, on the first day of training camp when it's the bag skates, no media. 
I know that won't happen because of the world we live in. But you don't need to see a guy struggling out there. Like these guys have never stood on that line and tried to fucking skate under a certain time. It's fucking hard. They don't you know, know anything. I mean? They don't know anything. I got a great fucking veteran story about. So most times you go to camp, right? As a veteran, this is my fifth or sixth year in the league. I'm in Vancouver, one of my third year in Vancouver, right? As veteran guys, you get your you know three or four exhibition games, and you're fucking you know you're just you're you're you're, you're gearing up for opening night write ups. Av pulls me aside after my first exhibition game, and he goes, "Hey, Obi, uh, you know I know you're a veteran guy, and you guys you know you just want to ease into training camp here, but." Uh, you know, you should really take these preseason games pretty seriously. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, don't sugarcoat it, A.V. What the fuck are you trying to say? He's like, well, listen, you know, you're not going to probably be, you're not going to be here this year, so these games are important to you. And I was like, fuck, this is something. Why did you guys even resign me? Like, so to me, I was like, all of a sudden, from that moment on, every preseason game I played, I tried to play as hard as I could. But normally, those preseason games are just, you're trying to get your body feeling good. You don't want to get hurt, right? That's all all of Rackman Larson is doing, try to, you know, get used to the new city, don't get hurt and be ready for game one. So yeah, when I it. saw that video, I love the trade. I'm sticking up from. Uh, I partied with him in Vegas one time with Biz. Biz obviously didn't pick up a check. <laughs> but I like this kid is all I'm saying. Ups. You just made a point that I should touch on because it is PTO season. But I can't remember the last time I played in a preseason game that I didn't treat it like it was the most important game uh, of my isn't life. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that fucked up? You played I played fucking, fucking whatever, how many games? 750, whatever you got. And the most important games to me were the ones that laid right in front of me. In September. With fucking no NHL guys in the goddamn lineup besides me. Great point, I'm in Dallas with playing with no fucking NHLers in Colorado against McKinnon, fucking yeah. McCarr. Gerard, who I absolutely fucking smashed in the corner. I watched that Sorry, game. Sorry, kid. Hey, I watched that game at Big Canyon drinking red wine. It wasn't Camus, but a drinking red wine. You had a great game. So for, for you know, it's funny. And then and then when you sign, even if it's a minimum contract, the first couple games you go, oh fuck, this is great. Yeah. Like I, I actually don't have to fucking go face first into the wall right now. Like I, like oh, I thought I had to a week ago. And it's crazy. And this is no disrespect to guys that play in the American League because I played over three hundred games in that league. But when I was in Calgary and the writing was on the wall, I remember talking to my agent, Caught and Jerry, being like, fuck, I, maybe I should just go down for a conditioning or whatever, just to play. Like, I'm not even playing. I'm playing six minutes a night. So I end up getting waved anyways. And I thought I'd go down there, Oppie, and it would be easier. It was almost harder. Like, these guys don't know where the fuck they're going to be. The travel, three and three. I was like, get me back to the show. I'll play six minutes. So, <laughs> um, Bag Skates brought to you by our good friends at Canada Dips. Uppy, that was unbelievable. People in Canada, the lip boomers are coming, man. They're trying. I don't know what the hell's going on up there, but they will be there soon enough. So, um, up dog. Last night I flipped on a little preseason hockey. Um, I caught the tail end of Seattle Edmonton. First of all, those Seattle Kraken's white jerseys, they fuck. Fuck, they copied us, didn't they? They copied us. They fuck. They look so good. Now, saying that, first of all, Uppy, we've been, you know, we're we're no we're so proud to be Canadian, me and you. Fort Mac, Port Hope, Ontario. We're good Canadian boys. Played Absolutely. in the CHL. Yep. It's good to see Canadian fans back in the barn. Damn. Edmonton, right. there was fans in the barn. Caught another preseason game in Montreal. There was fans there too. I know they had some at the end of the year. My question to you is after a year of no fucking drinking at hockey games, should we buy stock in Molson Canadian? Because these Canadian beauties are gonna go. Like opening night. I guarantee you'll see some of the drunkest people you've ever seen leaving Edmonton, Vancouver, Toronto, guaranteed. I just like it for, for, you know, for the guys out there, the guys that just want to fucking get, you know, get out of their garage. Yeah. Because they've been watching fucking games guys in the like garage Princey. forever. Guys like Princey. Princey. Princey's dying to get out of the fucking Fuck, home. he's got a nice little unfinished basement down there. He Looks just probably good. crushes fucking porn and hockey all day, <laughs> all day long. Good for his, you, Princey. His history browser is missing curfew, NHL hockey, porn, porn up. up. Yeah. But anyway... Get in the fucking barns. Get cheering. Get loud. Watch fucking McDavid do the shit he's doing. Watch watch the boys fucking watch Matthews and and Marner hopefully pick it up again and treat you know treat this season like they got to get out of the first round. Jesus. These guys, you know, and 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 the young kids, man, it's going to be great in Canada. I'm to get so them happy back in the for building. them. Yeah, like Matt, I I got to, in all honesty, I probably watched live ob before i turned professional i maybe watch five fucking live nhl games 
before I turned pro. Daddy, buddy, I bet you meet too much. But dad. every game was the best fucking thing I've ever been to. Exactly. I got to go with my dad and like a couple buddies, and we'd be on a hockey tournament in Edmonton or Calgary, and all of a sudden you're like watching the fucking NHL players live, and you're like, God, this is like living a video game. And and th these kids like get out of their fucking houses, yeah. you know, get out and go and and you know experience what it's like to be. You know, to be fucking human watching live sports again. So Absolutely. I, and it's it's a great point by you. I think my dad, Pitter the Beauty, who actually went to his first day, he went to the Jays game last night with my mom, Roxy. We call her Roxy, Pam O'Brien. Went to the Jays game? They went to the Jays game last night. Fuck first time lost. they've been in. Yeah, I know. I bet them. First time, that's probably why they lost. Loops is like, we're riding the Jays. I'm like, fuck, fella. Every time I bet them, they lose. I bet them last night, they lost. Um, So, mom and dad, hope you had fun. The first time they've been in a crowd since oh, COVID. Wow. So, that's pretty cool. But yeah, for Uppy, like you said, I mean, as a kid, I think I went to whatever, maybe ten Leafs games, five. My dad would take me. It was it was amazing. So, to the fans of Canada, Up Dog and myself, we give Canada a hard time sometimes, but we love it. We're happy for you guys. Enjoy it. There'll be full barns as we move forward. McDavid and Hyman last night, Uppy. I, don't, I, I think you saw the goal. I talked to you about it. McDavid was 110 miles an hour. It goes nurse to Bears. Bears does something with it down behind the net. Back out to McDavid. Four cracking guys looking at McDavid and Hyman standing right where he should be with a stick on the ice in the blue paint. How many goals do you think he could get? How many goals do you think you could get? <laughs> I mean... Feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this Hyman kid, say what you want about him. I think his style stinks. But he works hard. He gets pucks out and he goes to the net. Could he get 40? Could he yeah, get, he's got a stinky he, style. His style sucks. Um, could he get 50, 40? 50? Is he this outrageous? Get, no, he's not going to get 40. He's not going to get 40. Because he can't shoot. But if he just stands on that blue paint. He, so that's good for 25. You're going to be you a don't 40. Think he gets 30? If you're a 40 guy, you got to fucking pick, yeah, pick you're, corners. You're right, you're right. You right. can't just like. You're I right. mean, listen, that's maybe you fucking can. Oh, no, you're right. That's preseason. In the NHL, when it gets going, it, yeah, you're right. And this is also what's going to happen is Zach Hyman is like your coach's best like friend, right? Totally. He works he's hard. Coach's dream. It's ugly, but he he does the right thing, and he's a good two way player, and he works just as hard in his own zone as he does in the offensive zone. So he's never going to get in so much shit from Dave Tippett. No. Now, a guy like you know, for example, a guy on a PTO in St. Louis who had a Hattie in his first game, James Neal. Crazy. James Neal doesn't work as as hard in his own zone, but he's a sniper in the O zone. You would think a guy like that playing with McDavid would just have a natural knack for the net and score fucking a bazillion goals too, but can't keep up. He, but the coach is like, "Fuck, you're not doing it both ends. You don't deserve that spot." Zach Hyman will des he will show that he deserves the spot if he can keep up. Now, I don't think Zach Hyman's the fastest player, yeah. but he works hard, so he's going to get that spot. And he goes to like he's like you, like you. You kind of got to go to the net. Hard. You got to forecheck. He forecheck. Now the play last night you're talking about, which is only Connor's first preseason game, but the puck comes to him as he's curling up the half wall, and his first touch on his backhand is so fluent to his forehand in like a millisecond that it's like the right play. He could have either shot it and had an incredible scoring chance, but he puts it like right on the tape for a tap in. These these type of plays. Connor does in his sleep. Zach Hyman is gonna is gonna be rewarded for this if he can if he can make the thing about this, you gotta make good plays to get them the puck. As soon as you start fucking that up. Yeah, but I that's why I think Uppy, he's gonna be he's gonna be so hard on the four check yeah. that he's gonna get the bisky mm -hmm. and then Connor and whoever Connor plays with. Is it gonna be that Yamamoto? Is he gonna get another chance in that fucking line? I don't know who it's gonna be. Cassian, get Cassian up there. But I think that's why it's gonna be such a good fit up because Hyman hunts puck so hard and that's all McDavid needs. If you separate the guy from the puck and McDavid comes in and grabs it, good fucking luck. So I mean, I, I know what you're saying. I just think it's it's such a good fit. And I think that's probably why Hyman signed there. Obviously, it's a great contract. I have a chance to play with McDavid. I'll be honest, Uppy. I'll say it here on Mr. Curfew. I I put a little money on the Everton Oilers to win the Stanley Cup. I got great odds. Um they're my underdog. I'll tell you my favorites when we get closer to the season. They're my underdog pick. I know it's probably not going to happen because we saw what happened last year in the playoffs against Winnipeg. But when you have Connor McDavid, eventually the stars are going to align for this kid. So we'll see what happens. But to fans in Edmonton, good to see you back in the barn. Get that place rocking. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was good for me to see them back there, up dog. So um, a beauty from, from Denver, Colorado. 
And you know how I feel about the Avalanche up last year. We went back and forth between, you know, the Avs and Vegas, and you ended up being right. Kyle Keefe, who uh, came on for a quick little bit when we were in Tahoe, but he's going to come on for sure. He's an absolute beauty. Loves to golf. Loves to have a few with the boys. Would end up back at my house after the games every now and then in Colorado. He sent out a tweet, and I'm only saying this because of our boy, Bo Byram, oh, who I know you love. Bo Diddley. We all love. He had some injuries last year. Didn't play in 25 games. Makes him eligible for the Calder again. Kiefer tweeted out something along the lines of the last team in the NHL to have a Hart Norris Calder winner. So he's basically saying... Has I, that ever been? I don't know. It's something that we should look up. Prince, so obviously... Prince McK- Princey would... Prince A. Hart, McKinnon, Norris would be with Kyle McCarr, and the Calder would be Uppy's boy, Bo Byram. It could happen. Bo Byram scored a short side titty one last night. Uppy, we love this kid here. I want him to stay healthy. I want him to stay healthy. Yeah, and when it when it comes to, you know, concussions and stuff, like it's, you got to give the kid time. Yeah. And I think he's had time. He looks great. I watched a little bit of that game. I love tuning in last night and throwing around the channels. But it was, anytime you get a Colorado Avalanche, Vegas Golden Knights game, you know, it's worth tuning in. There's always great players. There's always good plays. There's, you know, it's fucking high action hockey. High octane. I, to me, Bo Byram, if we're talking Calder, and I threw a little bet on him last year, but he didn't play enough games. So I should have got my money back. Yeah, you should have, but bet him Uh, again. A hundred percent. But I look and, and when I look at, you know, shout out to the daily face off boys, Gregor up North, your website's great. When you want to fucking look at, you know, line matchups yeah. and line combos. I'm looking at Colorado's line combo right now, Obes. And, you know, Bo, Bo is going to play with Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson's coming off a, a tough year where he was hurt. Probably the difference why Colorado couldn't get through Vegas. It was one of the biggest reasons. And John Michael Lyle said that when he came on Mr. Curfew. And, I, and Johnny was right. I couldn't agree more. So Bo's playing second unit with Eric Johnson. A left-right shot. A lot of opportunity to create offense with those guys because, I mean, there's no question that the, you know, that Landis Cog, McKinnon, and Ranton are going to play all night long. So they're going to get their reps with these guys. But what I look at with the first power play unit, like he's not going to get these looks a lot. He's going to be behind McCarr, who deserves to probably play every second of their power yes, play. He I does. think this guy's so nasty. Um, Put a little money on him to win the Norris. So, like, to me, a Calder Cup trophy winner, you know, last year's Kirill Kaprizov. They're playing minutes and minutes and minutes on the power play. And it's unfortunate that there isn't more opportunity for a few more guys to play power play minutes because it's a fucking game changer. Yeah. It's like it's like being in NFL. It changes your whole stats. It's being in NFL and only playing red zone. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you got fucking 25 touchdowns and you lead the league in it's, touchdowns. It's, but you don't play for fucking the whole length of the field until you get right in the red zone. It's like Ezekiel Elliott this year. He's shit. They give the ball to Paul, Pollard the whole time and then they yeah. get the red zone to give it to Zeke. And he just fucking one yard. Boom, and then boom, boom, you get paid. So all I say is this kid, Bo Byram. We love him. He's a left shot. At times when your PP is not working. And right now I got up, you know, because they do such a good job this daily fantasy. First power play unit, Landis Cog, Kadri, Rantanen up front. McKinnon, McCarr on the back end. That's two right shots. You know what? This isn't working. Fucking put the lefty righty shot yeah, up there and have these, there. have these guys fucking pass it back and forth yeah. with one tease. Yeah. You know, that, that's one thing I would just say, like, let the kid get his reps in with the big boys on the power play because I think it'll fucking it, it, it might hand him the caller trophy that might be 20 points right there it's a great point by you and another thing is if you know if their power play is clicking the way we think it's going to be the, the second unit won't get many chances because they're going to score right away mm-hmm. so it's a great point by you shout out to our boy Kyle Keefe I, I'll be, I already put money on the abs to win it too so hopefully Colorado Landy get them going up dog real quick before we have our guest on my boy Cools from NHL Network he's a beauty shout out to your boy Army Five years. Give him some love. You Doug know, Armstrong. I know you love him. Five years. I, we don't even know how many bananas. We know Fox it's Army. up there. You Holy des- moly. You deserve it. Winner. I mean, Olympic manager now two years in a row. Um, quality, quality guy. I think he I, I think he treats his guys with respect. He treats the families with respect. He, uh, he's a smart hockey guy. And he's a big fan of the pot. So we got to have him on. I think w- I'm going to throw it out there. We're going to get Doug Arm- Armstrong get on. on before they do the Olympics. We're going to let St. Louis, you know, they're focused on a good start. And the doing fact daddy, stuff. the fact daddy. Factor, you know, they lost Schwiz, but I love what they, you know, I, to me, I think bringing in James Neal for seven, eight hundred grand Why is not? a good pickup. 
you know, he's he's gonna he's gonna help. He's gonna score a few goals. You know, they move Sanford. They yeah. move Sammy Blaze. Fuck, I love Sammy Blaze, um, but you gotta do what you gotta do. But St. Louis, their decor to me, best in the league. Um, you know, they signed Pareko to long term deal. Good, get that out of the way. Kid's good. You know who I think is gonna have a big year there is Tory Krug. I think everything that he went through last year with with you know being in Boston, signing a huge ticket, COVID. From what I heard, he's a team guy. He likes to go out for dinners. I think Tory Krug bounces back big time for this team. And to Army, I love Sammy Blaze, but the Bunevich, is that how I say it? Bunevich he picked up? Yep. That's a great trade. It's a great trade because St. Louis has enough meat and potatoes and grind guys that you can get rid of Sammy Blaze, bring in a little more skill, which they need. And New York needed toughness, which I love what New York did, and I'm fired up to watch the Rangers play. But Army, man, I don't know him personally, Uppy. I just know you respect him a lot, which makes me respect him. But, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see if St. Louis can bounce back. Obviously, you know, everyone knows how I feel about the fact, Daddy. We're always pulling for St. Louis. They need some speed. We'll see, we'll see how they do. I'm looking forward to it. So congrats to him. I know you love him. He, he, he gave you a chance and you took advantage of it. So, uh, Updog, thank you for being a team guy, opening the Camus. I, I knew you would do it. That's why I brought the opener. Of course, man. We still got a few sips left for our yeah. boy Coolis. Our boy Steve Coolis is coming at you next. This guy knows everything about hockey. We'll talk about his hockey basement. He's got it's just stock full of pints. So coolly coming at you. Up Dizzle, our great friends at Aura Ring. We talked about Ryder Cup this week, the old recap. I would have loved to have seen some of those boys. Aura Ring recovery after three days of golfing. And you know DJ and the boys were getting after it. I wish I could see their Aura Ring recovery stats. Well, you're right. And Aura Ring is a super precise uh, technology, a wearable technology, OBS, that really can let you dive into how your body's reacting from the craziness that you either bring to the table <laughs> or, you know, in, in, most, most, in most people's cases, um, learning how to get quality sleep, quality rest to feel optimal throughout the day. Aura Ring combines Advanced sensor technology and a minimal design with an easy-to-use mobile app that I check almost every morning, fella, to deliver precise, personalized health insights straight from the reliable source, which is our body's obes. Because there's nothing better than waking up and feeling great. Oh, and knowing that, you know what, I've put together four or five days of quality sleep. My body feels absolutely optimal. That'll be given in a reading in the morning. And that you can bring the heat. And you know what bringing the heat's all about. I used to bring it, yeah. I yeah, used to bring it. So it's all about bringing the heat with Aura Ring. <laughs> if you've ever seen, um, you know, Aura Ring, you follow it on Instagram. They've had celebrities. Jennifer Aniston was on a talk show the other night, showing off her ring, showing how much yeah, sleep she's cool. got, throwing a little competition out with Kim Kardashian, all the uh, all the high quality celebs. But we're all part of the same circle, from pro athletes optimizing performance to those striving to improve personal well being. Aura Ring is built for everybody, our fans here, especially at Missing Curfew. So tune in now, be part of the community, and it's trusted by the pros and it's won by everybody. So let's uh, let's jump in on quality sleep and health obes and optimize living. Absolutely, Aura Ring, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Missing Curfew. Up dog. That was great. Little rundown, fella. I look forward to every week with you. Um, a lot of cool points. Talked about bag skating, how much we hated it, how much you got to love it. Little McDavid talk. A little talk about everything. So that was awesome. Well, speaking of cool, though. Yeah, man. This guy, up, you know, I mean, without this guy, he, you know, I've had the privilege of working with him last year on the power play on NHL. He brings energy every week. He's made me better. I finally had the privilege to have a couple cold ones with him uh, when I went home in the summer. Uh, a legend in his industry, a guy that brings it every night, energy, locker room, guy you want to have a pint with after the game, sit glue on the plane guy. with, glue guy, my boy Steve Coolis. Cooley, baby, I miss that smile. I miss you guys. Thanks for having me on. Shane, Scotty, uh, keep up the great work. Hockey's back. Uh, I'm going to steal some of those little tidbits for uh, my bio. Some people think I'm a legend in my own mind, not a legend <laughs> of the time. But anyway, it's great to be back. Uh, the beer league team is struggling. We could use both of you, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to put this face to the voice, Cooley, because I, I listen. I, I, I gotta be honest. I just, I put serious radio back in the fucking car 
A, because my blue my Bluetooth doesn't work anymore. I got the 2011, still Obi makes yeah, fun of me. Yeah, he's got to get a new car, cool. But uh, I was like, you know, I, I was listening to you boys all year on my phone. And then finally I said, fuck it. I got to get this thing on my on my car again. So I get the, I get, you know, I get NHL serious now. And I love nothing more than to be cruising, you know, to the driving range or doing something and listening to you and Obes and the boys on the power play, bringing the heat daily, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, you did an incredible job with Obes, but, you know, to put the face to it, bro, I don't know why they just got you on serious radio. I think you need your own fucking TV show. <laughs> you need your own series. Netflix should take you on. Uh, bro, you bring the heat all the time and it's special to watch. I appreciate it. You know, I, I've had my own television shows, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that. Two different networks, uh, a, a, a split in a in a good way to do radio. Spend time with my girls as they played hockey. You only get ex, your parents know the same thing. We know you don't want to miss the ten year old's hat trick, or, or like once it's gone, like it's gone forever. And to get a phone call and say, "Dad, it's Jack, hat trick. We beat Pickering," and I missed it. I couldn't. Yeah, I, I couldn't. And the split with Rogers and TSN happened at a good time. The radio thing happened at a great time. Hey, I'm always here. Somebody told me I had a face for radio. I know I have a face for, for the silver screen. I've been in a movie with Olivia Newton-John, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, I miss your spandex pants from Greece. She didn't like that. But hey, that's a story for another day, too. <laughs> Hey, so I just wanted to say this. Just Colby Armstrong, I've known him forever. I played World Juniors with him, good buddies. He always told me, like, when Sid the Kid came in the league, he goes, Up dog, you got to see this kid. I call him the absolute creature of hockey, right? Like, he's the, he's the kid that grew up under the bleachers at the rink, and he just would fucking, all of a sudden, he'd slither underneath, and he'd grab the stick and the skates, and he would just be the best fucking player ever, right? So I'm sitting here with Obes and we're going over like, you know, we have Steve coming on. It's going to be great. And I'm like, buddy, I just can't help but think that this guy is like the creature of sports personality, hockey sports personality. Because every time he gets that fucking microphone, he brings the heat and he's he's, you know, exuberant and he, he actually can bring a listener in. Yes, is there sure. someone that you like looked up to or what, what kind of brought you to this like point uh, where like literally you have so much fucking energy. I don't know what you got going under there. You got the Red Bulls <laughs> going under the fridge. All legal. Yeah, it's legal. <laughs> so, so what is it? Well, well it, it, something natural. You're obviously a hockey fan. You obviously know so much about this. You well-respected guy in, in the, in the world of, you know, hockey. So what, 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 what brought you here? Well, I, I fell in love with the game when I was four that's, I saw the kids playing on the street and we watched game one. I don't want to date myself. It's easier just to say I was four. The Summit Series. When we had a party yeah. at our house. Yeah, he loves Alcohol, Rothman cigarettes, everything else. <laughs> I saw this and the way, of, I just watched Friends the other day when, when Chandler's friend came in the room that Debbie, whatever her name was, Charlie Sheen's wife, she did the thing with her hair. That's what I did when I saw hockey and I, I fell in love with it instantly. Team Canada, that led to the NHL, and I and I wanted to be a player. You guys have done it. You you played your hundreds of games and did there. I goal one was to play in the NHL, and I said if, if I can't do it, I got to be Foster Hewitt, Ron McLean, or back then Ward Cornell and Dave Hodge. So I said I'm either going to be career one or career. There's no third option. I'm not selling furniture in my dad's store, so I'm going to be <laughs> if I can't be the captain of the Leafs, the Habs, the Rangers, whatever it is. I better be really good at this. And a teacher taught me at Ryerson, someone's always practicing. So if Paul Correa takes 500 backhands, I better be there to, to be as good or better than the next guy or gal. Paul Correa did take 500 backhands. I played with him. He was my favorite player growing up, and I witnessed one-handed backhands in practice. Like, I'd wow. never seen a guy sit on the side of the net and do one-handed backhand fucking, like, saucer passes into the net. But But it's true. So what you just said is exactly right no matter in what business you're doing there is always someone doing something more or challenging themselves more than what you are probably capable of doing so well said steve well said and i just want to give a plug to michael landsberg because i watched him at tsn and i so i don't want to leave anybody out but landsberg and mark hebsher there was a show called sports line that was cutting edge in southern ontario the only the first sports show was on at 11 30 Back in the day, yeah. and Mark Hebsher, Jim Taddy, and I watched those guys, and I you learn, and you, you and and I got to say, Don Cherry was the first person that said a lot of things that made me go wow. So if I said, as Obi, we've talked about, if we're on, 
You don't want make people to say, wow. You want people to say, wow. So, so Don, mix Don into the equation because I think he was, in his prime, he was Sidney Crosby of today, no doubt about it. It was on after fishing, eh? 11.30 in the morning. It was on after the 9.30 a.m. <laughs> fishing show on TSN. <laughs> Good memory, Uppy. Oh, yeah, totally. Cool, cool. I mean, everything that you just said, I witnessed it firsthand working with you last year. You made me better, buddy. And I said that at the end of the year, like, you make people better around you. You made me better. You bring energy every day. And this is the first time we've had you on Missing Curfew. But a beauty out there did a Missing Curfew drinking game. And I wanted to just let you know that I bring you up so much that one drink... You have to have one drink with Obi mentions PP with Cools on the power play. So you've been talked about the entire last year, buddy, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Everything you've done for me has been huge. I think we need to drink, though, yeah, cut yeah, you yeah, off yeah, because yeah, he yeah. just mentioned the PP. There we go, yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Yeah. Cheers. So here, cheers. There's going to be a couple other cheers. As cools, I'm before I you know, had the privilege of working with you last year, brother, when I was playing junior hockey in St. Mike's and turning pro, I remember the score back in the day, and that's when I first saw you. And, you know, obviously Cabby's doing great things now, but just talk about, you know, I still think we need in our game now that, like, I don't know if the right word's cool, but how different and unique the score was back then for you guys. Revolutionary. I give John Levy a lot of credit. He, he's the owner and operator. He had an idea and he had a vision. Uh, his grandfather, dad did very well. So he had pressure on himself to do well in business. And he did. Uh, the app just sold for 2 billion. So he, he must've done something right. Right. But, <laughs> And he was ahead of the time in gambling. Isn't it funny? 20 years ago, gambling in sports and, and the government, God forbid, oh, because the government and the leagues didn't get their cut. Now that yeah. they're getting their cut, gambling, it's okay. <laughs> it's it's okay, Virginia, you can gamble in a hockey game now. But the score was a special place. Uh, it gave me a second life because TSN was never going to give me a chance as a younger guy then. So if the score didn't come out to be the Seattle Kraken, or Vegas Golden Knights, I couldn't have been William Carlson or Mark Giordano or whatever. So I needed the ice time. I went to Peterborough. They said, we'd hire you, but you're going to leave in two months. We're not going to hire you. I went to Kingston. They said, you'll be gone. We know you got... So I was I was a tweener, not good enough for the big leagues, and I needed a platform. So the score became the Montreal Expos, and we could swing our bats. I could spread my... I, we could screw <laughs> up. And, and I knew when I was on, once I got comfortable... I was going to be the hockey guy, talk hockey, and trade deadlines, and make the younger guys like you and Scotty love me for saying I'm real. I'm not BS. If I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong, but I wear my emotions on my sleeve. So the score was a great training ground. And you talk about Christmas parties. Oh my goodness. It always came to a point that I said, honey, Come and get me, because this thing is turning <laughs> coyote ugly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you have the onesie on? Me and Obes have a couple pictures from our Florida Panthers Christmas party. We were both wearing these onesies around my Christmas tree, eh? yeah. and then we went to Willie Mitchell's place and had an absolute that was a shaker. time. God, I love those parties. Yeah, I have a onesie, and they're so warm. And the real truth is, you sleep great in a onesie. Like, buck naked. Then the onesie, <laughs> the only problem is if you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you got to unzip. But a onesie... I mean, the onesie where the feet, you know, the feet are in the onesie, right? Yeah. That's, that, but we'll, we'll talk about hey, that. Hey, do you go, uh, Stevie, when you when you dress up for your men's league team, do you go Buck Diddy under the jock, or what, what, do, you, what do you got on? I go Buck Diddy and bare feet. I'm Bobby Orr, man. Bare, bare feet. Bare feet, Bobby Orr. I'm, I'm Buck, and uh, I'm, I'm a cross between LaFontaine, Mary Lemieux, <laughs> and Darcy Tucker out there. Oh, hey, I know I one of my favorite Leafs ever, Darcy Tucker. Hey, Cooley, do you know what's epic is if you walked into a new room right now in the NHL and you just threw your jock on with no undies and you went bare feet in your skates, the guy, all the kids would look at you like you're a fucking animal. <laughs> they would be like, yeah, what's this wrong guy's with this going guy? no ginch and I no know. socks. No socks in his wheels. When, I, like, when, I, when we came in the league... There'd be like Billy Holder with his long hair. He'd come in and he'd sit there, Buck Diddy in his in his stall for you know thirty minutes, shooting the shit with everyone. And then he would he would just get dressed with no nothing on. And I'm like, fuck, this is how this is how the did things ever, are done around here. Did I ever tell you that Trotsky compared me to that guy? Like I was in Billy I, Holder. Yeah, I was in Nashville, and then Trotsky's like, you ever heard the name Billy Holder? I'm like, not really. Tr uh, Trotsky's like, you kind of remind me of him. And I like looked him up after. Like did next you day, I'm like, Trotsky, holy fuck here, Billy Holder. Eh? Like, <laughs> did you drive to practice fucking on your Harley all the time? <laughs> no, I did. I'm, maybe the caveat time, but not on my Harley. <laughs> maybe fuck. The cab. Um, oh, that's good. Cools. You know, we've talked about ESPN and TNT and, and you know, me and Uppy talked about this over the weekend and I wanted to talk to you about you and it's no disrespect to the guys that they hired, right? Like, they're professional. 
were you a little surprised that they maybe didn't bring in some flesh, bro- flesh, fresh blood and, and new guys? Or how do you think it's going to go this year? I know you're in Canada, but how do you think it will go with ESPN and TNT, TNT down here? Well, we talked about it a lot on our show, and, and you brought up a lot of great points. You know, the Paul Beeson Ed factor is great. You know, maybe a different look. You know, I'm 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 really curious to see how Wayne does. You know, Wayne's not known to put you know himself out there. Will that work? Can someone push Wayne? Um, you know, Steve Levy's a master of all trades. Uh, a lot of the guys have kind of been around. And hey, look, we want it to work for the league. We want it to work for us. You bring up the TNT. On the basketball side, I'm not a basketball guy either. I probably would only watch the TNT halftime report because those guys entertain me. And when I go back to the game, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. I'm basically just a hockey guy. So give me a show. You guys have a great show. You've been special. It's something. You either got it or you don't. So I want them to have it. And if Messi and Chelios and on the different, you got to be able to push them. One thing we know is, oh, you're in that chair. You're pushing Scotty's buttons. I'm in my chair. I'm pushing your buttons and Rupper's buttons and everything else. If you can't push Wayne and Chris and those guys, it's it's. I don't think everyone just gets their turn on television. It's got to be more of a smorgasbord, and it's got to be different. Like the score, like we got to back to the future, Alex P. Keaton. We kind of got to go back to the old say, no, 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 no. We don't play that. We don't cover the points anymore. We don't do that anymore. Who invented the one three one? All those types of things and how sensitive they are. We were on the air last year, Obi. And we came on, and I'm not going to mention the name, but they know. Okay, NBC's gone now. Bruins Flyers. Bruins put five forwards on the ice with <laughs> David Krejci at the point. I'm at home watching before my beer league game. I'm watching. <laughs> Mar- uh, the draw is won by Bergeron. Surprise. The tap back by Pasternak. I know the play. Krejci fakes. They fake the Pasternak in front, tipped home by Richie. Wow, five forwards. We dissect it the next day. NBC missed it. Five forwards. They're doing the game. They're (laughs) doing the game. So I say on the air, they missed it. Well, they didn't like that. God forbid constructive criticism. If I missed it, I'd be in the basement doing 100 push-ups as a punishment. (laughs) We have to simply make a mistake. They missed it. They missed it. Five forwards on the ice, McAvoy. Who plays five forwards? Even in the end, we play four, one, three, one, the, the new system. They had five and they scored. We talked about it on the show and they didn't like that. Remember this from Seinfeld? They didn't like that, Jerry. So Corporate. guess what? They had to be better. And they're gone now. I hope these two entities, they're talking a big game. Entertain me. Obi, Scotty, we're going to be back like this. Entertain me. Yeah. If you don't entertain, if I don't entertain, we're done. They better entertain us. I think you hit it. I think you hit it right on the fucking nose is TNT. They're about entertainment. They are going to, it's going to be a feeling out process. And Obi always says this, like the first year and no matter what it is, the first pilot of an episode on fucking, you know, on Apple TV plus, you never know if it's going to be good, but then you get to season two and three of fucking game of Thrones and you're hooked. Now, will they be able to source the talent day one? You know, are the guys, going to fit the mold for what's going to be a show for the next 10 fucking years you know because tnt is not going anywhere espn's not going anywhere these are now the 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 faces of hockey that are going to take us to hopefully another stratosphere so we can compete with baseball and football and we can do it all because it deserves that we deserve that fucking trajectory hockey deserves it um so i i think Take away NBC and all the fucking bullshit that they did deal corporate wise. They, you know, they had to just smile and wear the right tie and do this and do that and say the right thing. I think ESPN and and TNT, I think that they're going to tell their guys to go somewhere that hockey's never been. And hopefully they can. I think Chelios is fucking badass. I think, you know, what he has to say and what's on his mind is probably something people want to fucking listen to. Biz might be the guy to get Wayne to go somewhere he's never been. Yeah, I hope he does. And that's why he's there. I hope he does. I, Anson Biz Carter's that, with them. So Anson Carter, Biz, Gretz. Like, hopefully those two guys can just lighten up and bring Wayne. And maybe Wayne's not on every Wednesday. Yeah. I think it's. I think Wayne's going to come in twice, three times a month. Not every week. But he's going to be a guy that starts to, like, hopefully, wow, Wayne's coming on this week. We all got to watch. Yeah. And then Biz is like, I got to bring Wayne to a level he's never been. And that's 
that's something to be seen. And I think that's great for hockey because it'll bring people to watch it. And whether or not they kill it right off the bat or not, it still gets the eyes on there. It still gets the eyes on the best players. And that's to, it helps all of us. Yeah. Fuck and, it. And, and cools. You know what, brother? Like the way you work, like I see it firsthand. And I, I tell it to Oppie the way, what you do five days a week in your preparation is unbelievable. But me and you've talked about this in between periods, especially on TV. I, don't break down a fucking three on two to me. Don't break down what happened in the period. I, wa I watched what happened. Maybe we could break down the odd play, but for me and you, Cools, we talked about this. Give us stories or, or, or what you think about other than just what happened in that first period, Cools. You, would you agree with that? Yeah, especially when nothing happened in the first period. <laughs> if you force a square peg in the round hole of a 0-0 zero -zero game, then you're forcing yourself to talk about what's not in front of you. Maybe in the particular game, let's just use an example. A one nothing game, McDavid scores, and it's a great – and so we show him skill set attacking the yes, triangle. Yes. Everybody doesn't need to jump on that. But if the big story is – okay, McDavid, our game's McDavid. But well, what's going on, Uppy? What's going on, Shane, with, with Jack Eichel? Is he yeah. going to miss the year? And the exactly. Like, exactly. What's on the center now? So Dude. our game does not have to be the – if our game is, oh, we got Chicago and Detroit in March, our game is irrelevant – what we got to do is elsewhere, McDavid's got 147 points. <laughs> Talk about that. Elsewhere, Tom Wilson doesn't have a penalty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like elsewhere, that's the kind of thing I'm saying. Then totally. you focus on what really matters. So I think, honestly, Shane, you hit it on the head. If our game is that good and that important, we can deal with the first period. If not, what's going around in the hockey world that we can engage? And that's you bring up a great point. And, and I couldn't agree with you more. And I hope that's the aspect they, they, they go to. I don't know if they will. I hope they do. Um, Cools, something that me and you talked about a lot this year. And I, I love, you know, one of the things I love about you is we can argue and then, you know, it, it's nothing. It's just keep her going. But the cross-checking, it's been brought up again here by the NHL and the NHLPA. They're going to talk about it and look it over. I, I think I know how you feel on it. And I think you know how I feel and, and how Uppy feels. It's a slippery slope. What are your thoughts on it moving forward here? Do you think we're really going to see a lockdown like we did on the hooks and holds in 04 when we were coming in? Yes, I do. And I know you're going to tell me on October 18th. Are you happy, Cooley, with the 47 <laughs> power plays last night? Are you happy McDavid broke Sittler's record in the second period? Yeah. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? And I'm going to say, yep, I am. I am. Because eventually how hard you start – there will be a net. The volume of these brand new speakers are going to. They're going to be at 15 and they will come down a little bit, but they need to stay strong. So the cross checks are basically hooking, slashing, sort of, and holding eliminated. So do I want every single one called to the letter of the law? Probably not, but well, they're going to come down hard. They're going to come down hard and say this. Why would he have to put your stick? Morgan Riley got burned the other night. He, he thought he said, "You kidding me? Where was that Shea Weber on Austin Matthews last year? <laughs> well, we didn't have the rule last year. That's what the referee said to him. Hey, this is new. It will it will open up in front of the net. It will lead to more goals. And really, Obi, do we need to cross check? Why do you? Yes, body we do. Petition? Yeah, we, no, we do need to cross check. That's goals. what we have the stick for. Hey, cools. And you know I love you, but you said right. You said right there. You don't want him to call everything. Cools, they're going to call everything if you want to go that way, buddy. So see, the old beauty in you, that fucking, you know, you want still not everything, but that's that what men's I'm, league beauty. Yeah, I'm saying, Cools, if they're going to do it, fella, they're going to do it. And then me and you, you're going to have to put up with my nonsense all year being like, in front of that blue paint, Cools, and this is a guy that went there a lot, and this was a guy that protected it. That's man's ice, Cooley, and that can never change, buddy. I don't care what year it is, who's playing, you got to earn that ice. So you're saying commit many illegal acts <laughs> to permit your team from not losing or a scoring chance, take your stick perpendicular to the ice, parallel to the ice, and hammer a guy. Shove it up the guy's ass back. if you want. Right? If, if you did that in all the other sports, could you do that to the wide receiver? Could you do that to Michael Jordan? Could you do that to Vladimir Guerrero? Does the catcher stand up and grab Vladimir Guerrero's son – Junior, by the curls and pull him and say, he barely pulled his hair. Like that, 
It's a big deal. No, no. You either <laughs> did it or you didn't. And I will err on the side of putting these cross-checking criminals in the box for more offense in the NHL. God bless Nikita Kucherov. Thank God he broke his rib on the play. That helped change the rule. That's different. That's that was different. in the corner. That play cools, and me and you talked that about play it. Was that in the was a fucking penalty, even in our era. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's in the corner. You want to come to the blue paint? It's, it's a battle. Your stick comes up. You fucking... It's basically without dropping your stick and like hitting each other to get out of there. You need your stick in your hand. You're not. And, and if it comes up above the guy's fucking shoulders, then it's a penalty. But if you go into the corner and you hit a guy in the ribs with your fucking stick in a full vicious cross check, it's a penalty. If he comes to the blue paint and he's trying to push you into your goalie and you fucking cross check him to get him out of there, that is not a penalty. That should never, ever be a penalty unless it's like a vicious thing. Like it's. It's everything. It's a love tap. It's your PK guy and the fucking top circle guy comes like into your area and he's ready to take a one time and you give him a little fucking shot. Not a penalty. No, he's on the fucking power play. I have an advantage right now and I'm going to fucking take advantage of you. That's so we agree to disagree. Men's hockey. I'm losing this two on one. No, this is not. It's nice. Hey, listen, all year I had you and Steger coming at me. So I brought in my fucking sixth overall pick here (laughs) and it's cool. You know what? You make a great point. And listen, I wanted to ask you also about, we talked about it a lot during playoffs, almost to the where near the end of the regular season, I was getting myself in some hot water over some things I said about the officiating stuff. But I talked to Nathan McKinnon when I bumped into him and your boy Crosby at Shutters, and, and Nate said to me, can you believe McDavid went the whole playoff series against Winnipeg without drawing a penalty? Or you know something along that lines of, so cool. So what I'm saying is the regular season, the playoffs, how different it is was the biggest problem, I think. Don't you? Like, the, the rules changed so much that these superstars are like, what the fuck is going on now? You know what I mean? But then they're not superstars. Sorry, before you even start. They're not superstars if they can't fucking do it in the playoffs. And that's a point that needs to be taken. And if you ask Wayne, that's what he would say. If, if, you, you ask, asked, if you ask Sid, Sid would say that. If you ask John Cooper, his guys have stepped up in the playoffs when things get tough. In order to be a superstar, you find a way to win in the playoffs for your team. And things change. So elevate, adjust, and make it your game to be a playoff guy. That, that's sorry, but that's all I... No, no, and, and I agree with that. And, and all that is true. I think what they're saying is we can't go from feast to famine. We can't go where here is our standard. And now this offensive and exciting and 105 point for McDavid regular season, we go to the playoffs... And we look over there and, you know, the Grim Reaper, Ogie Oglethorpe, all these guys are there. And as soon as McDavid crosses the line, they throw a black sheet over him. They tie him up. They lasso him. They cut off his left foot. And he and they say, what? They say, let him play. Oh, that's hockey. So I'm saying, where are we on? I get tightening and loosening. and But we can't go from way over here to way over here. And in Gretzky's era and Chelios. You know, we know where they were. What we're saying now is competing with the other sports, competing with uh, modern technology and the kids and eight-second attention spans and the phones and da, 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 da. Maybe we need more offense in the playoffs as opposed to just get tough and get get dirty. I think it's an abnormally unbelievable that McDavid's gone two playoffs without drawing one penalty. And then I'll say this. Let's just say it was McDavid. It's in China, and he's coming over the line. And then Seth Jones mugs him, and then and then you know Wierenski jumps on his back. Then people say, "Hey, come on, that's a penalty!" <laughs> well, I wasn't in the playoffs last year, but because he's wearing your sweater now, now you want a penalty. I would like to get to a nice, comfortable spot where it's tighter in the playoffs. I get it, but the the ratio from penthouse to outhouse isn't so big. That's all and, I'm saying. And, so so and you're telling a, me that true, you're true. telling me that Josh Morrissey was Ogie or, or, or like whoever the fuck. And that like Morrissey. you know uh, I'm looking I'm looking at some of these D men on Winnipeg who fucking manhandled these guys in Edmonton. There's no one fucking tough there. So they just played hard and they figure out how to win. They they didn't have goons. Like so you just figure it out. It, it's not going to be it's not going to be this like fluff game in the playoffs so don't expect to get three or four power plays a night play a fucking tight game and step up when the time comes five on five games shouldn't be decided on power plays ever it shouldn't be unless unless someone is taking advantage and like absolutely going after guys then 
then the game should be separated. A ref should be like, okay, you want to do that? There's five on three, five on three, five on three, you're done. But in a playoff, like playoff stupid app, penalties you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Or, or where they're really taking advantage. Like I'm talking like spearing and after every whistle, like it was the, actually the only way Montreal should have, you know, created a series against well, Tampa I was think- to be like that. I think that's what put everything on the radar. And Cools will probably agree with Montreal's run, right? Like they had all of old, like veteran guys yeah. that were playing that way, and everyone was like, "Fuck, you can't do this anymore." Like, and me, I was like loving it, watching it, but because it works, it does work. In but the playoffs, I think, and, and what Cools, you know, me and Cools argue about this all year, and we will again this year. But and my dad, shout out to Pat O'Brien, who wanted to call in. Uh, he's like, "I'm going to call in uh, a power play." I'm like, "Listen, if you call in to Cools." You be ready to go because this guy knows <laughs> his fact. But the, the the separation cools, and we both agree on this from the regular season, the playoffs, it's too much. Now, in my opinion, cools, I'd rather see the regular season called a little bit closer to the playoffs. Now, I think they're gonna go this way with the cross check cools, and they're gonna have no choice but to open up playoff hockey. And you're gonna get your wish, my man. I think it's because once they do this, they can't go back, cools. You might be right. Um and there was something wrong about, like, it, it's a sample size. It's, it's, it's a case study. We don't like dealing with a lot of stuff in grade 9, 10, 11, English and, and, and math. But Montreal, in two regular seasons under COVID, would have missed the playoffs <laughs> with the regular season. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. So you're saying, this student is an F student. Well, look at them. They're 24th tied with Chicago, and they're 18th in the NHL. But they're in the Canadian division, which which had its COVID issues and other things. So they're in now. Okay, well, they're not a good student. So how are they going to pass the exam? Well, in one year, they beat who? Pittsburgh. And then should have beat Philly. Like, they, they, sh- they should have won another round. That's the student. And the other student goes to the Stanley Cup final. What are you talking about? <laughs> what, what pill did they pop before the they exam? Took- that they doesn't took, make any sense. They took the well, Carey Price you pill. The rules right. and you allow the four pillars on the defense to, it was too much. It was just too much. And that's where we as hockey people, who I like to be wowed. I have Pamela Anderson. I don't want her to poncho. I want to see her coming down the beach, not wearing a poncho. I want her in the bikini. If you want her in a poncho, we'll agree to disagree. We went from Pamela Anderson on the beach to Pamela Anderson dressed like, well, basically, like she's not from here. We can't even recognize her. <laughs> so this so this beauty, Uppy, so this beauty. So we're watching Montreal go, and we're both Leaf fans, right? We're good, both Ontario boys. And whatever, the Leafs gets bounced, we know. But the, as the Canadian go, they go on. So they, they play Vegas. I said, cool, there's no fucking chance they beat Vegas. I'm taking them minus fucking whatever they were. It cost me a fortune. They beat Vegas. They go to play Tampa, and I'm texting with him. I go, cool, they're not going to beat and he's worried. He's worried. So game five, I'm texting him and no response. No response. I'm like, that's fucking weird. Text me after the game. He's like, had my phone off, Holmes. I had my phone off. I just had to witness it myself to make sure they weren't going to win. I'm like, I told you they weren't going to win. But they had us worried, Cools. We were sweating. I thought if it was Islander, and I like a lot about the Islanders, but they're they're not, they might be there this year. Yeah, they look good. They've added their skill, Lee's back, and Paul Mary's there and all that stuff. I just thought Islers Montreal was not good for the game and not the two A plus students. So for me, Tampa winning for sure is I need to go to bed. When 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 Lemieux was down two games to one against Minnesota in ninety one, it was two games to one. I thought if if John Casey in the Wild win the ninety one Cup, I'm not gonna be able to sleep at night. Like <laughs> and then what Mario do? He made the the bu- oh Mary here's Mario. Bob Cole made the call. They won games four, five, and in game six, eight, nothing. They did the, there you go, Minnesota. The Penguins won the cup. I just didn't want Minnesota North Stars of 91 to be the Islanders. Islanders are better than Montreal, I believe. Or Montreal, I wasn't ready for what I didn't think in my little world that the best team wasn't going to win. So when they won, did I crack a bubbly? Did I have a Cuban cigar? Yes, I did. I'm not cheering for anybody. I was just cheering for greatness. And greatness won the cup. Yeah, the best team. And I know exactly what you're saying. And I thought the same thing. Listen, I love Shea Weber. I was at Corey Perry and Josh Anderson. I loved what they did there. But if it would have been in a different jersey, I could have gotten behind them a little bit more. It was hard for me with them in those Montreal Canadiens jerseys. But at the end of the day, the best team won. And that's what you want in the Stanley Cup. And, and cool. I got a couple more for you here. And so does the Updog. 
First of all, I got to ask you about your Toronto Maple Leafs heading in. I know you don't cheer for anyone because of uh, the stuff of the power play, but I do know you're a good Ontario boy deep down. What are your expectations? I like the Nick Ritchie. I like the Kase pickup. How are you feeling here moving forward? And is there any way we see Morgan Riley moved before the end of the season? I think the only way Riley's moved before the year, if the year is an unmitigated disaster. If, if, if they go into, like, if it's just terrible that Tavares gets hurt again, Matthew's wrist isn't healing, none of the new guys pan out, uh, it, Marner is in another, if it's a, just an unmitigated disaster year, Riley would then move around the deadline. So all things being equal, I still have Tampa with all the, we love the third line, Obi. We talk about the third line all year. They're all gone. Johnson's gone, but they kept everyone else by the brilliant Johnson trade for the Seabrook cap. Like just brilliant general managed move by uh, Julian. Uh, yeah, Julian Breezeball. Uh, Breezeball, Breezeball. Breezeball, yeah, just signed his new contract. Yeah, I told yeah. you, a little preseason form I'm in. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That was I a got brilliant you. move. So you sit there and say to yourself, okay, Riley will stay. They're going to make a run. They got to make the playoffs and then win around. If that doesn't happen, Dubas is in trouble. Hyman's gone. Everyone got worse. The good teams got, preachy has gone. You know, teams lost players. All the good teams lost players. So they all kind of got worse. I think the Leafs got worse, less than Boston, than Montreal, than Tampa. I still have the Leafs at two. They're going to lose and miss Hyman if this offense and grit by committee can answer the bell. I still think they can finish second. What they then do in the playoffs... I'm not making any bets on coolbet.com or anybody else of the Leafs in the playoffs. <laughs> DraftKings. Their goaltending is a, still a wash. The defense is still good. Uh, Sandine is is, is going to come in and, and do some pretty good things. So they're minus Hyman adding these other guys. They're almost the same. So I still think they'll have a very strong regular season. I'm not ready to talk about the playoffs. But if they miss the playoffs with this team, oh, boy, the CN Tower. <laughs> <laughs> the is it, is it going to be red, white, and blue again like it was last year when the Canadians were going to stand the Cup? I'm still not over That's that. That's crazy. Cooley, I got, and I'm with you about Tampa. We talked about Tampa after the season ended, after they won the Stanley Cup. It was our topic every week. What are they going to do? Who are they going to get rid of? We love that third line. Give Breeze Bros credit. They brought in Corey Perry. They kept their guys together. Uh, look out for the Florida Panthers. I think they're going to win that Atlantic division, in my opinion. I think they're going to win that division with the moves they made, Reinhardt, so forth. Um, so yeah, you're right about the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think that division's going to be hard cools. And my last question to you before I turn it over to Uppy for his last two is everything we've been through the last year with COVID and getting through the seasons from a friend and a professional, what are you most excited about this year with fans back in the building and some normality? What are you excited about my friend? Well, I, I'm glad you brought that up because you said it. And when I went around in the summer, I did meet people that said, you know, I love it. Of course I still watched it. It just wasn't the same. And the highlights last night in Edmonton with 60, 70% capacity, like, wow, both people wanted to be there. They cheered all six goals. Like the Oilers were winning a playoff series. They're excited. I, I like what the Oilers have done. I, I, I love a lot of things about Edmonton as an example. They're going to finish second. Vegas won Edmonton too, and the Pacific is already done. So I'm excited about <laughs> normalcy. Honestly, normalcy because we've missed it. And I went out the other day and I looked around and for one second, I felt normal. Because people were out on a patio, they were drinking, and they had, didn't have masks on, and which is okay. They're allowed not to, you know. And they were. And I looked around, and it felt normal. So it's like having an injury and then feeling good, or or you know, coming out of the hospital, like, and you're, you know, you've been had a concussion. I'm sure we've all had them, and you're not. Then you feel normal, or you're. So I'm excited about normalcy, and then all the. I believe this will be the tightest league ever. I believe if you go 0-2 and one in your last three games, you could go from. Wild card one yeah. to out of the playoff. I think this is going to be so tight and so exciting. The playoffs don't start May 1st this year. They start on the 12th of October. I think this year is it's a marathon, not a sprint, but it's kind of a sprint. So I'm excited about normalcy and the tightest season ever. Well said. Well said. That's We're great. all excited hey, for hockey NHL, again. NHL, make that the what. promo for the start of the season. Bet McGarry, that should be the promo for the start of the NHL season right there. <laughs> totally. Put it on there. Hey, so Cooley, over to COVID, like, you know, Obi, I've been to Obi's place. I see where he sets up his computer and he sits down with you every Tuesday, Thursday and shoots the shit and chats. And and that that's life for everyone. Little home office now, getting things going. This is, I see, where you like to spend your time and you like to spit your knowledge on hockey. 
But what do you got in the basement? What do you got in that man's basement down there? Is that where you go down and crush a few pints? I heard you got a nice beer fridge down there. You had Mr. O'Brien here there. Is that where you watch your hockey games and do all your studying? Yes, I do. I would have done all of this down there, but somebody told me, mix it up. You know what I mean? Like uh, in life, uh, too much of one uh, style is a bad thing. You like to mix <laughs> things up a little bit. So the way I look at it is stay on you know, the main floor, get sunlight, see the snow, hear the birds, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it also allows me to cook during the show. I can do the baked yeah. potato. He and does so the steaks now, right, Obi? Yeah, he's a good cook. Nice. Up yeah. During the show? Oh, yeah, TV timeouts. He goes in, take, takes the... So yeah, not yeah. just the hockey personality. No, he's, he's got a, good, a cooking he's a show cook. at the same he's, time. He's a good cook, yeah. Fuck yeah, that. I think we're on to something. Yeah. Yeah, and then the basement is my... I grew up in my basement watching hockey with my friends or my buddy Paul Popolkis. He had a basement. It was either mine or his. Everything's always been my house or his house. I built the basement to watch hockey, to bring your buddies over, to play poker, to, to all those kinds of things, to bring Shane down to the bar, drink some Crown Royal and have a great time. That's a great place. And in the summer, I don't need to be there because you want to be outside. The sun sets, you know, at 10 o'clock. Um, and yeah, you go down, oh, it's, you know, air conditioning and you watch a Netflix movie. But now we're back in the basement mode and getting going. Scotty, first time you're in this neck of the woods. I'm coming over. It. We'll go to the brew house. We'll come down here. We'll have a great time. Uh, we're blessed to all be healthy and doing what we're doing, so it's great. Uh, but I love going down and watching hockey there. It is my cathedral. It's my Catholic church. It's my happy place and space. Well said. It's either the basement back home in Canada or it's the garage with the boys. That's yeah. that's the that's thing. Or if you're in Newfoundland, where I'm, where I'm from, my parents are from, fuck, there's the odd shed where you go into it and it's just souped up with the sticks and the TV and the fucking beer fridge or anything. So shout out to everyone in Newfoundland and all the boys that like to enjoy watching hockey with uh, with their buddies. So men's league starting up soon or what? Because what me and Obes, have House, a, we yeah. have a charity game here in a month and we have not dusted the wheels off. Um, so we're going to fucking find our skates. Loops cools, doesn't have skates anymore. Cools. I don't think I can fit into my gear, man. I don't know if I can play. I don't think I'll be able to fit into my gear. Cools. <laughs> so, so, but hey, but... I mean, listen. How's we're the gonna... golf game and how's the men's league team doing? The golf game surprisingly is steadily trending in the right direction. Uh, I can't restroke. I don't do those putts unless we're in a rush. So uh, I had a nice 89 and a nice course this year. It was very, for me, it's very good. There you Happy go. With that. Uh, going to go on Friday, take out my buddy Billy, who's been on the show before in the trivia contest. Uh, he's retiring. So uh, he's packing it up. We're going to go to, uh, you know, Wolf Run. In yeah. your neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll then, uh, we might go to uh, another place and then uh, to the pub. Uh, we're going to see if everyone's okay with that <laughs> and, play some poker and figure things out. So the golf game's good. The beer league team has a bye week this week and start next week. If you can believe this and your listeners and watchers are going to say this, we have a practice tonight in <laughs> Oshawa at 10 15. Men's League practice. In beer league? We're having a practice. I'm in charge of the power play and I'm running the Bolts power play and I'm going to be Kucherov. I have decided. <laughs> so we're running John Cooper's power play in our practice. But let's be honest, we're going to practice and then we're going to go to Chuck's. So that's what it's all about in beer league hockey. Just no uh, cross checking in practice. No though, cross right? checking. Uh, Cools, you're a fucking beauty. Last thing I want to talk to you about is is girls hockey. I know your beautiful daughter plays at the University of Guelph. I know you're a big supporter of it. Just uh, how important is, is is girls hockey to you? And obviously, following your daughter, I know it means a lot to you. Yeah, my older daughter played at Windsor. She just did her LSATs. Now it's about law school, so uh, she was lucky enough to play there. But apparently, school's important. Uh, I always <laughs> thought hockey's important, but school's importanter. But, but apparently that's not good grammar, so <laughs> that doesn't seem to work. Uh, so she's at Windsor and played there and had a great career. Jessica's at Guelph, and they love it. When I was a kid in Scarborough, Ontario, growing up, I went to my rinks, the Tennial Arena. It was a Sunday. I was a rink rat. I, I was. So I went there, bought my, my uh, sponge toffee and cherry juice, and just watched the games. And I went in there, and I saw all these ponytails. And I did say, what are the girls doing here? What, what are they doing on our ice? Like I, I was one of those 10 years old. Yeah. And then I think to myself, Oh my God, these are the girls who, who want to play, who love the game, who watch the game, who have the kids who then play the game. You know what I mean? Jack and Jess are going to have kids. What do you think they're going to play? They're going to play hockey. It's, that's a non-negotiable with their future husbands. What, <laughs> what, we're not playing. No, no, we're playing hockey. I'm getting up from the table. 
that's it. Pay the check. They're, they're going to play hockey. So I fell in love with the game. I thought the, the Canadian win in the uh, overtime was great. Sir Philly played with Jacqueline and the Murphy girl from the States, who's an 2 an 18-year-old playing the world championship. Uh, oh, just nailed her once. Oh, boy, what a body check. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, I love it and fell in love with it. And you know what? It's something that if you've got girls, don't give up on hockey. Realize that they are – they care. They can play. Yeah, it's not the – you know, I get it. But when you're watching it, it'll it'll mean a lot to you. So don't give up on the girls' game. Well said, Cools. And for our listeners out there, five days a week, the power play, three to six Eastern, you can hear Cooley. Tune in if you're on the road or whatever. This guy knows the game. Cools, thank you for everything you've done for me from a professional aspect. You're my boy now forever. I can't wait. We're starting next week. Um, thank you for joining us. The Updog loves you. You're a beauty. And listen, you're good for the game. So keep her going, buddy. I just want to say this. Um, Sorry for your loss. We appreciate that, brother. Cheers Thanks, Jimmy. Pop. Cheers. Jimmy, buddy. Thanks, Cooley. Thanks, Cooley. Up dog. Canada dips, baby. Um, I got a lip boomer in right now. I think I got. Let me check. What do you got in the pocket let today? Let me Oates. check what I got. Oh, yeah. For the Broadway, I got the tangy citrus flavor. Because he liked that and the mango, remember? You know what I love about these go. tins is that it. you can just snap it. I feel like I'm in junior hockey here again. Hey, just and- snapping it around. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, you know what? You know, I always have it in my back pocket for, for golf. It, it balances in, you out. Balances me out. Sits in there well. Tangy citrus. Mango were the Broadway's favorites. I like them all. I mix and match them. I go American Spice, Winter Green. You put, I put it all together. Um, promo code. Curfew, Curfew Cali, Cali, baby. Get it in you. I suggest you do the O'Brien. Five California rolls. So five times five, 25 tins coming at you. Promo code Curfew Cali to the Canada boys. Thank you for everything the last month. You guys have been solid. Good team guy. Glue guys. Up dog. Lip boomers www.canadipcbd.com promo code curfew cali curfew cali up dog um uh thank you for being a good team guy and drinking the camus i knew you was yeah it's one of those bets that that old It was yours, so thank you. I mean, good thing we didn't go to the Magnum, right? Because we're in shit face right now. We had to get Uber out of here. Um, Uppy, I I love breaking it down with you, buddy. With a little preseason hockey around the corner. NHL season's upon us. It's going to be great. Um, You know, obviously, we're still shorthanded here, and as we will be moving around with both Broadway. But it's fun to be talking hockey with you, buddy. We're moving forward to Cooley. Um, You know, you know how much he means to me, Uppy, and how much he's helped me in in the second chapter of my life and helped us. You know, he makes us better. We use some of his material throughout the week, and um, obviously he's an emotional guy. You saw there; he was he was very supportive through the whole Broadway thing. Man, he was reaching out to me, and um, you know, Broadway came on NHL, you know, probably yeah. five, six, seven times throughout the year. They got to know him a little bit, and you can see how much Broadway touched them and in, in the little time they had with him. So, thank you to Cooley, thank you to you, Up Dog. It's it, it's fun to be back in here, and you know, feeling a little bit of normalcy after the last month we went through, fella. So. Um, yeah, man, that was well fun. Said. Yeah, we'll, well, said. we'll break yeah. it down. Cooley, and, you're the Cooley, man. you're the man, baby. I've seen you do, I, I've fucking seen you laugh, and I've seen you throw out some hilarious one-liners as you did today. Uh, it's just nice to finally see them. I, I wish, you know, part of me wishes the Sirius XM radio had a little, like, TV to it. Well, you know what? It's funny you said because that. Sh- shout out to Bruce Bolton, our producer, and Jake Hahn, our uh, editor, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I said that. I'm like, yeah. you guys should have a camera. Look at Cooley on and the Peter camera. Bruce, who, Peter heat. Bruce, who actually is the boss boss. Peter, you're the man. But yeah, I'm like, and I told Cools that when we we're in the yeah. in the hockey basement. I'm like, you there should be a camera on you the whole show because he's so animated. That's how that's how he is. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I I like it. I like it. Or maybe a car, couple of cartoon figurines to just, you know, to throw a couple is, highlights of all the things you guys actually get to say. Cause a lot of it's so it's great. Yeah. It's quality. People listen. 
you know, I, I, I vividly remember the last show that you guys were closing up with. You guys did like two weeks straight, man, and throughout the last little bit yeah. of the playoffs. And that last week, I knew you guys were grinding. I don't grinding. know how cool he was, but I saw you. <laughs> and the last, like, you know, the last couple shows with the people calling in and thanking you guys for the year you had. And Obes, like, you know, they were, Obi, you brought so, so much to the table with Cooley. And you were the only show we used to tune into. And to see, like, you know, fans give that back. And we know what, you know, the last month we've seen the fans and how they have sent us messages yeah. of encouragement and stuff. So we're witnessing how they treated you guys from uh, a, you know NHL serious radio standpoint was, was special to watch. And, and to see him being the pro he is and it rubbing off on you and you bringing it into this room and this show, uh, it's great because, uh, you know, we can always learn from guys like that. You know, he'd been around yeah. the game forever and loves the game, speaks so wisely loves of the, the game. game, family guy. Uh, so, you know, well, well said, great guest. Well said by you. And listen, I love that we had, we were two on one of them there. Okay. I love that. You were like, fuck that. You guys play off hockey. Cause that uppy is how I truly feel. And I know you do. And maybe we're dinosaurs now or whatever you want to call us. Yeah. But till the end of the day, I will be like that. So to Cooley, thank you. Uppy. Thank you great for work. always to our fans. Thank you. That was missing curfew. <laughs>